Uh, seeing that, it's uh, 6.31. I am calling this meeting of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Situate um, to order. And I just want to let everybody know that uh, obviously this uh, is being broadcasted, obviously, and there aren't nobody, nobody else is in the audience at this time. Um, so I uh, go to agenda item number uh, two and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. This so is So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on to agenda item 2A. It is pending litigation, and we are looking to go into executive session on matters that are presently in litigation. If we were to discuss it in open form, it would be have a detrimental effect. So, having said that, I'd accept a motion. Move to go into executive session for the purpose of pending litigation. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Or right. shall we say, I think it's a uh, roll call vote. Mr. Uh, Murray, yes. Mignani, yes. Danny, yes. Mr. Morgan, I, Mr. Yes. We will go into executive session and return um, once we've um, moved out. Thank you, folks.
Folks, welcome back. We are in executive session on litigation matters. Now we're back in <coughs> open session, and now we're moving on to item number three on the agenda, which is a discussion, vote, signage, traffic rules, and regulations committee. On behalf of the applicant, I guess I'm looking for Officer Thompson. Is Officer Thompson here? I don't see him. You need him, do you, Charles? Do we need him or? No, we don't need him. It's All right. Pretty, pretty it's pretty familiar. straightforward. Um, this is basically what we're looking at, folks, for those on uh, TV or, or trying to in, in the audience here. Uh, on Stockbridge Road, near the intersection of Kerry Litchfield, there is a yield sign. And if you're driving Stockbridge heading towards Brook Street, uh, the Traffic Rules and Regulations Committee is looking to change that yield sign to a stop sign. And the Traffic Rules and Regulations Committee has requested and uh, recommended that we, the Board of Selectmen, who um, are the authorities for uh, signage. Uh, so I think that pretty much sums it all up. Uh, I, I think any Mr. questions? Mr. Harris should make that motion. He was very instrumental in, oh. in, in getting this. a long this. time coming. Fair Would enough. Make a motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to amend the traffic rules schedule and replace the yield sign of First Parish Road and the Starbridge Road with a stop sign. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion from the board or from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Joe. All right. Very good. <coughs> Moving on to agenda item number four, discussion vote for drain, la uh, drain layers license. And right now there happens to be one for Paul Grata, the president of Hub Construction and Maintenance Co. And the second one is for uh, Makowitz, I believe, um, Makowitz Construction, Inc. Um, these are renewals, are they not, Kim? Or one's, one's new? new. Is anybody here? Is Mr. Grata here on behalf of Hub? Mr. Harris? I don't see Paul out in the audience. I just know of him. Uh, been a, and I see Mr. Cafferty out, out in the hallway. I'm sure he'd back me up on it. They've been in business 40, 50 years. A lot of equipment, a lot of experience. I think they've... Uh, in emergency situations, been here and situ done stuff for us. So I'm very comfortable that they're more than capable of getting a drain layers license. Looks like they have all their paperwork in the order. How does the board feel? Motion. Just a quick question for Al, if I may. Um, do we have some sort of rating? Like if somebody did something poorly, would you know about it? Yes. Okay, and none of these people have any... Motion? Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a drain layers license to Hub Construction and Maintenance Company, Inc., out of Helm, Massachusetts. Second. Hull, right? Hull, yes, H-U-L-L. -L. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving on to the second one. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a renewal of a drain layers license to <coughs> Mankiewicz con uh, Contracting, Inc., 3 Windward Way, Situate, Massachusetts. Second. Second. Oh, Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Very good. Moving on to item number five on the agenda, a discussion vote, <coughs> one day wine and malt beverage license for the foyer of charity. <coughs> and on behalf of the applicant, I think Father Bradley, are you there? I am, yes. you please come on up? Looks like you're looking for a um, one day um, Wine and uh, beer license for, um, um, looks like a benefit you're having uh, for the Friends of the Foyer. That's right. And this is on June 16th, which happens to be uh, June 27th. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the date of the application, the 27th, so it's this week. Mm -hmm. uh, from 4 to 7.30 p.m. 4, yes. Any questions from the board? Motion, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the one-day wine and malt beverage license to the Foyer of Charity, 74 Hollett Street, for Sunday, June 27, 2010, from 4 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. for a garden party and benefit auction for the Friends of the Foyer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Any discussion? Discussion from the board. Any discussion from the audience? Seeing none. 
Take a vote on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you very much and good, good luck. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number six, discussion vote, outdoor entertainment license for the Situate Harbor Yacht Club. I see Mr. Gard and is this Mr. Um, Hoffman? Thank you, gentlemen. Looks like you're looking for a uh, outdoor entertainment license for July 10th from 12 p.m. till 4 p.m. with music to be provided. You have a regatta going on <coughs> held on that Saturday. Um, Aside from that, any questions from the board? Seeing none. Or well, did you go out to the out. neighbors? I, I assume there, you've got loud, loud uh, amplified music, so do you typically go out to the neighbors and make sure they don't have a problem with it? You do this every year, right? Yes, we do. Several times a year, and we are always conscious of the neighbors and they're, you know, uh, we are respectful for them, and we do try to keep the noise as, you know, amicable as possible, and we address any issues that come up if they do come at the time of the event. To my recollection, I don't think we've received a single complaint no. ever. So, I mean, it's a good point to make sure the neighbors are in the loop. But I, I, I've never heard anything negative about any of the functions that they they have. No, and their home's very close by. So, I mean, if you yeah. if you're to hear something, I'm sure you'd yeah. hear it first, but then we'd hear it. That's right. It's good stuff. My motion, please. Um, please. please move the board select and vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Situate Harbor Yacht Club 84 Jericho Road for a post regatta party to be held on Saturday July 10th 2010 from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. with music to be provided by a four-piece amplified band is there a second second seconded by mr. Harris any discussion any discussion from the audience seeing none take a vote all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. any against no, it's unanimous thank you gentlemen thank you. good luck thanks all right, moving on to agenda, agenda item number seven, meet the applicants. This is our annual appointment, folks. As you probably have known uh, in the past, there are committees and boards that uh, the Board of Selectmen appoint, and this is an opportunity for the board to meet the new applicants. And so having said that, um, is Jack, is it John? Oh, yes. Okay. So, two of the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, of the nine applicants are not here. Having said that, I'll move on to Mr. Roberts. I know he is here. Come on up, Mr. Roberts. You're looking to be appointed to the Community Preserva uh, Preservation Act, yes, or, or commission, sir. committee, rather. Yes. Sorry, it's a typo there on my part. I've completed uh, <coughs> nine of the last 11 years of the advisory committee. They told me maybe I wanted to find something else to do. Any Kim, questions please. from the board, Mr. Are there, how many openings are on that committee? There are four at large positions. Three of the four um, have asked for reappointment. So it's up to you what you choose to do. Um, well, we're not voting now, but so when we know only, so there'll be five people running for four positions eventually. Right. Correct. So uh, if I may, uh, reappointment is uh, not automatic. No. Any other questions from the board? Yes, sir. Have you have you been liaison to that committee for a couple of decades or? <laughs> Jeez. Years. <laughs> Just a few years. Crowd. <laughs> so you know quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what the meeting uh, is all about the process and uh, and we feel as like we contribute and would like to, uh, particularly for the open space and the recreation. Just to be fair, Mr. Roberts is a native, if I'm not mistaken, he grew up here in Citrus, right? Uh, yeah, they referred to us as towns. Towns. Yeah. So he has a lot of wealth of information at Citrus. So, uh, I think he'd be a great, uh, a great person on the committee. Thank you, Scott. You can hang around and stick around. We'll be voting later on. All right, moving on. Dale, and I'm sorry, is it Balog? Balog. Balog. I'm sorry, Dale. Come on up. Dale's looking for appointment to the Council on Aging. And there's only one opening. And you seem to be the only person who's looking. So um, it looks pretty good. <laughs> do you want to say anything just briefly? I know, you, I know I'm, you've been working with the Council on Aging. Anyways. Right, I've been volunteering for the Aging Center since the holiday party, Christmas party in 2009. And um, I began to give more and more of my time and I found that I enjoyed it a real, um, a, a lot. So Good. 
I like the seniors. I like them. That's all there is to it. And I think that um, with my background um, of communication skills and working in customer service and planning events in my <coughs> former workplaces, that I can use utilize these skills. But my main goal is to just help the seniors help themselves. You're doing a good I like job. Them. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine that's good that's what we people who are encouraged to want to get involved and be active and you've already been doing that on a volunteer basis and we thank you um, questions from the board no. thank Dale you're welcome to stay uh, we won't probably get to it for about another hour or so but uh, if not <clears throat> you can go home and watch us on TV um, okay. but anyway <laughs> <laughs> thank you I, I don't see any competition but thank you very much okay, okay. thank you so much Bruce Meacham Bruce, you're looking for appointment to the Renewable Energy Committee. Come on up. True. Briefly, do you want to give it a little background uh, just for the board? And, I, and primarily, we've got some backup, but uh, again, for the audience and, and absolutely you'd like uh, appointment. I'm a townie in Norwell, not situate, but South I've lived situate. here since 1981. Uh, worked at Verizon with Bill Limbacher for many years, and then he bailed out. And uh, Verizon bailed me out a year and a half ago, and it gave me a lot more free time to uh, pursue interests and an interest I've had for about three years has been renewable energy. I've been sitting at the Norwell Energy Committee meetings for the two and a half years that they've existed and I was for the last three years attending Situates Renewable Energy Committee meetings and I even invited Bill Limbacher and Jay Silva to attend a Norwell meeting early on in their creation so that they could bring the Norwell Committee up to uh, speed and I've just been very interested in what's been going on. I think there's a tremendous opportunity for the town of Situate to uh, use rooftops for solar, the landfill for solar. We already have the turbine uh, planned for construction very soon, so uh, that's something to look forward to. And uh, the ocean management plan was passed by uh, the governor uh, in January, I believe, and that's another opportunity for Situate. We could have our own little Cape Wind right off the coastline between one and three miles out, if we step in fast enough, it's a first come first serve thing. We could have seven 3.6 megawatt machines sitting out there off of our own coast. And that's something we need to explore. We could ally with Hanover, Abington and Norwell to do something like this so it wouldn't be just the town <coughs> funding it. And there's an opportunity there. So there's a lot that can be done and uh, I'd like to be a part of it. I have an engineering degree. Uh, two master's degrees and all kinds of education, but uh, no place to apply it at the moment. It's a good. This is a good town to apply. I can tell you that. Um, is this an associate position, or is it a? Uh, is this a voting position, or the position? Full position. Okay. Um, questions from the board? Mr. Well, Mignon? just Kim, on on this one, what is? How many slots are available? This is actually not. There's no description of how many slots. Are available, okay. So. so I think this is an ad hoc committee, isn't it? Because I don't think we've given it a formal charter other than just in writing to the to the chair, Paul Reedy, who is doing this. Bless you. Bless you. So there's, there's no formal number <coughs> in, in this sort of thing. Great. Any other questions from the board? Oh. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Uh, Carrie Cullen Hitt. Is she here tonight? Ms. Hitt? Okay. She's looking for appointment to the Renewable Energy uh, Committee also. Um, Brad White. Is Mr. White here? Yes. Mr. White, come on up. You're looking for the Waterways Commission. It's a, a reappointment, if I'm not mistaken. Good right? evening. Yes, I'm a, a currently an, an alternate on the Waterways Commission. I was uh, appointed to that in, I think it was September or October of this past year. I remember. And you're an associate, or, or the alternate, so to speak. Okay. Yes. No, I think it's associate. It's associate. associate right. and that's how we term it, uh, it okay. as alternate. Yeah. Associate. Alternate. I was just appointed to the Stillwagon Bank. I mean, sorry, to the uh, the NOAA uh, uh, Council for Stillwagon Bank, and that I'm an alternate on that. So. Gotcha. That's all right. Um, it's nice to have us elevated to the uh, <coughs> Stel Stellwagen Bank Committee. Uh, well, I'm pretty active. I'm a member so. of the Stillwagon Bank Charter Captains Association, as well as the Northeast Charter Boat Captains Association, and uh, the uh, New Inlet Boating Association. So I'm very active in the waters here, and I'm 
very interested in in the board that I've been able to participate in. There's a good group, very industrious. They get a lot done, and I, and I enjoy uh, uh, pitching in. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? Again, just on this one, Kim, I know I'm a record player here. So there's three people applying for how many slots? Two. For two, two slots? Two slots. Okay. So if you weren't picked into one of those two slots, would you still want to be an associate member? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And I'd also like to redisclose that I'm a Marshfield resident, so I'm officially a townie, but I'm a bridge and tunnel townie. I live right over the bridge, so Problem uh, with that. I, I'm a dual town. Uh, How's that tunnel working out? Uh, <laughs> it depends what time, right? <laughs> Thank you very Thanks. much, Mr. Way. Okay, Appreciate you're welcome. It. Mary McLaughlin. Ms. McLaughlin, come on up. And you're looking for appointment for the Waterways Commission also. Yes, I've been an associate for a year and a half. Um, work um, in the boat industry. I do boat canvas and stuff out of Situate, um, Hummer Rock. Um, I'd like to represent Hummer Rock. Uh, there's only me representing Hummer Rock at this point, so um, I'm hoping that um, having, a, having somebody to represent Hummer Rock would be a good thing. Would be a very good thing. So, uh, questions from the board? And uh, just again, there's three for two slots. Would you want to be an associate if? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, David Glancy. Mr. Glancy. You're also looking for appointment to the Waterways Commission? Yes, I am. Very good. Just briefly tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been involved in activities uh, around the Situate waterfront for many years. I've done uh, contracting type work for most of the marinas in the harbor and uh, on the rivers. And uh, I've been recreational boating in some commercial uh, marine activity. Have you attended any of the meetings or have you ex had any exposure or experience to the I, water? Well, I, I'm, I'm an associate member. Oh, already. I take that back. Yes, you have. So that's good enough. All right. Questions from the board? You want me to ask? Do you want to ask? Yeah. yeah. Go hey, ahead. Again, are you, you, you want to be an associate, associate member? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you. I was going to say broken record. People yeah. might not understand that today's. No one yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Um, CD with I'm a scratch, scratch on it. CD. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Glancy. Uh, Sean had a question. Oh, just, just, just a comment. I, you know, Dave sell, um, sold himself a little short. I couldn't tell you how many years he and or his brother has launched and taken boats out for the recreation department for different regattas around the <laughs> harbor, and you know, I noticed that's the type of guy he is. He's not going to toot his own horn, you know, and I just don't want that to go unnoticed. Dave's there. Anytime any of the marinas, private or public, need anything, they just call him. He's down with one of his cranes, and, you know. I'm sure for nothing, I'm sure. Modesty thank goes you. a long way in my book, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. All right, that's it for the uh, kind of meet and greet with the uh, applicants. Um, we're going to agenda item number eight, which happens to be walk-ins. Are there any walk-ins? Come on up. You have to tell me, or tell us your name and your address, please. Sure. Um, my name is Marilyn Ward Howe. I own Sands End Cafe. And please correct me if I'm not following the proper protocol, but there are three quick uh, items that I'd like to address. I spoke to Mr. Norton about them. One is I own a small cafe in Hummerock, and I'm asking the uh, Situate Selectmen to please place the porta potties in the parking lot in 2011 and thereafter before Memorial Day. It's my restaurant is the closest in the closest proximity to the beach, and it becomes a terrible strain on my personnel to try to monitor that. Okay. So that's a simple request, if you could please address that by 2011. They're there now, thank you very much, but uh, going forward, if you could possibly do that before Memorial Day, I'd be very appreciative. Yep. Number two, uh, this year you granted vendors uh, permits to hot dog vendors. And I understand that on many of our Situate beaches, there are no businesses in the near proximity. However, in Hummer Rock, I am within 150 feet of the vendor that you allowed to operate from. This vendor is now selling hot dogs, candy, sodas, and at an unfair advantage to my business because the vendor has placed him her or herself between myself and the ocean 
and uh, I certainly don't blame this person for doing so, but I'm paying over $8,000 a year in real estate taxes. I employ situate residents, and it's a very difficult task to operate a Hummer Rock business during the winter. So I would ask the selectmen going forward to please consider restricting the Hummer Rock Beach public entrance as one of the places that the vendors could operate from. I understand that the permit is in existence and I will have to live with it this year. Fair but going forward, would you please consider that, you know, I have a, a business that I'm trying to sustain and it's very difficult when somebody is placed in between myself and the beach. Third okay. item. Thank you. Yep. The third item is, and it's on your agenda, is number 14, and I would just like to add. Tell you what, why don't you wait if it's on our agenda? I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm like, no. we're going we're gonna to get to that item. Just okay. briefly on the first two items. Yep. Um, the first one, um, we'll, 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 we'll take a look at that. I'm not sure if that's going to be feasible or whatnot, okay. but we'll address that. Thank the you. second issue, I will say, um, certainly next year, and I appreciate you saying wait till next year, we'll take that into consideration because I, I, I think I can speak on behalf of the board weren't aware of the distance and the impact. And I think we're all concerned about local business people who um, could be impacted by the vendors and the hawkers peddlers. So I can tell you right now, I'll remember that next year in particular, because that's one thing that I, I think would be unfair and you're totally right on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Yeah. We, do, we do ask them, you know, when they're up, but we do ask them. I don't remember somebody saying they were going to go to Homer Rock. Because we, uh, we kind of say, okay, you're yeah. going to stay in Sand Hills and you're going to stay here. So I just speak. Just, just this, briefly. Uh, yeah, just make it quick. Uh, thank you for being so polite and, and allowing that to continue. It's, it's admirable. Well, if, if you, I have the option, I'd love you not to. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, when, let me just say that that person called me at my office before she came to this board, and I do distinctly remember her telling us that she didn't want to sell product like ice cream because that would be, you know, I, I realize you sell soda, I'm sure, but she was conscientious of the fact that you have a business there and. So I, I apologize. I couldn't agree more with what John. You obviously know the policy, 150 feet, and the, so the, so that's what you have is unique. So we'll have to address that and look at that, and you know, tweak it so it, it, sh you know, that doesn't happen. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Just, all right. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate it. All right. Seeing no other walk-ins, then um, I'll move on to agenda item number nine. It is a Hawker Peddlers and Common Vicular's license for hammerheads. <laughs> and if you Sean could just Hannon. identify yourself, is this Sean? Sean Hannon. Hannon, Mr. Hannon. Yes. What are you looking for? And you're from so, uh, Gilson Road. You're a situate resident? Yes, okay. Gilson Road, sir. Yes. I, I, I understand from your application you're looking to be able to sell hot dogs, except not in Hummer Rock, not but down on dogs. the Driftway uh, near Raymond's Paint. Exactly. And you've had uh, authorization, some kind of lease with uh, Raymond's Paint, the owner there. Yes. And what you need from us, this board, is to be able to sell hot dogs in that location, correct? It's not just hot dogs. What else you look uh, for? Chowder, burgers, uh, fish sandwiches, grilled shrimp, stuff like that. Is this from like a... Um, Ahi burger. From a car? Is it from like a, you know, uh, the... 6 by 12 concession trailer. You got pictures of it? Remember that the email? Non-mobile. We'll stay on that location and won't move. That so was the one we got the photographs of, Kim? Yes. Is that? Yeah. So it's non-mobile? Right. But it's a trailer. It's a mobile trailer that I'm not going to move from that spot. So you're going to you're gonna drive it there, park it wherever you and Raymond's Paint I'm agree? Right there on that spot. I'm actually going to have water and electric in our name, the business name. He has an outbuilding there that yep. Spruce Landscaping, I think, yep. used. So he actually, you know, allowed me to do that. So I'm going to transfer the utilities into our name. So I can have water and electric on site. Over by the propane tank? Uh, yes, probably to the to the right side of it. If you're looking propane on the left, that'd be on the right side. All right. Um, all right. Out of curiosity, sure. Hammerheads. What's the College name? nickname. Okay. Your name? Yes, mine. Okay. We'll my wife's back that. there. I'm <laughs> sure there's a story there which we might get later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Call I like, I like the fact that you're a situate like resident <laughs> and you're um, trying to make, you know, small business and trying to make a go. I think, personally, I think it's great if, if you can go in there. It's, it's, I don't think it's going to compete with Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, you, you're selling yeah. something completely different. And um, do that. What about Widow's Walk? It's far enough away, I think, you there's know. No, there's no seating or anything. It's... Uh, there's no seating. I would like to add um, two to three picnic tables out there. 
He has a huge lot, tons of space. You can go up the bike path and... As long as I do it safely, that's, that's absolutely what I'd like to do. Does this application include uh, outside seating and all that? Does it need to? Because I just, I don't care one way or the other. I just want to make sure all the paperwork's in sure, order, absolutely. you know. Um, I was under the impression it was a um, walk up to a window type thing, get back in the car after, you, after the train. Get yeah, off the train, option. drive in. I didn't know there might be a picnic table seating. I just want to make sure. I think it'd be a shame to pass up that, you know. I just want to make sure it's location. covered. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would the Board of Health have to? Uh, Board of Health and Neil would cover that, right? So. Yeah, I've been, Jennifer. Jennifer has a, a whole file on me now. Neil's already filed a letter sure. saying it's zoned for it, so the only thing would be the Board of Health to make sure that it's clean and that oh, yeah, she'll look at that. Uh, okay. So who else may have a problem with this? The only other close restaurant is really Widow's Walk, right? Morning Glory's Bakery. Morning Glory's and PJ's. Maybe even Reynolds. They sell hot dogs, but, you know. Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, uh, Jamie at Widow's Walk. Yeah. I think Jamie's, I think, uh, caters to mostly people that golf there. I'm not sure there's too many walking up the street at Jamie's. I, I it's different. I don't know. It's different. And what, breakfast. Are, what are your Jamie's hours? Jamie's does a great breakfast. Yeah. yeah. going to be pretty aggressive. I'd like to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, breakfast, I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, I, I think once I'm there, I'm committed to it. And, uh so yeah, is it five, I, seven days? How many, what seven are you? Seven days a week. Seven days a week from I what? Do it, twelve months out of the year as well. Is from what, is what I'm looking to do. Like seven to seven, or what? Um, probably six thirty, uh, up until about eight o'clock. Usually the traffic flow, you know, starts to <clears throat> slow down at that point. Six thirty a.m. to eight p.m. Every day. Re regular holidays? Okay. Uh, yes. I mean, like, yeah, with the, with an option, I might close here or there. Understood. You know. wait a week and see if somebody has a complaint? It's not just hot dogs, though. <laughs> a lot of other good stuff. <clears throat> well, this is brand new, this concept, I guess. Yes. And I've seen, you know, we all are familiar with this type of operation around as we drive around. Um, where, but where it is brand new, and we don't know the effect on competition or in local stores. This is a, is this a year license? Is this a That's year? what I'm looking to get, yeah. For the year. And it's a non-mobile, it's not. Yeah, I understand. I, you know, I guess I'd be willing to vote for it now with the understanding that I'd probably be looking at it again at the end, oh, yeah. at renewal That's time, just to make sure that there weren't a ton of complaints or whatever. I'm not anticipating any at all, but. You know, if this was for any term you want. Yeah. We can well, do it for any term we wish. Yeah. Mr. Years. Vignani? Just I, I had another thought and I'm I like it and support it, but like we just had a comment a minute ago about something that we didn't foresee. Would it make sense to wait until our next meeting to vote for it and see if anybody voices any complaints and then just vote vote for it then? I mean, I don't see a direct conflict with anybody. I, I think it looks like you're selling a little bit more upscale um, food. Yeah, I'd like to go and, more upscale. You know, but it may come back where somebody has a problem with you selling hot dogs and we say you can't sell hot dogs or something like that. I don't, I mean, I don't know. But uh, I, I guess I would say let's give the, the neighbors a chance to respond before we pass the license. Mr. Murray? I understand your point there, Tony. Um, I do recall when in the relatively recent past, within the last year, year and a half, a new restaurant was opening and several other restaurants came in and expressed concern about whether the town could support yet another restaurant and expressed concerns about competition. And while I found those arguments compelling, as did the rest of the board, I believe the board was unanimous in saying, well, that's sort of just the way it goes. I mean, that's what competition is sort of about. Um, so I'm not, I am worried about concerns such as the Sands End Cafe pointed out because that's a seasonal business and a seasonal thing and, a, and it's a mobile cart so I see the Sands End concern as as different from this one because you you are operating a, a fixed exactly. a fixed operation um, which is essentially an, another structure in name or at least in purpose I couldn't afford a restaurant so I completely I'm understand it right now I completely yeah. understand so you know my only concern with if we do 
if we do as you suggest, then is that going to necessarily change our views if some people say, well, yeah, I have a restaurant down the street, and then are we being inconsistent with what we talked about last time? The one thing I would be concerned about was if this was a neighborhood where there were homes, like right there, um, that could be disturbed at 6.30 a.m. And I know there are a few homes in the area, but Mr. Duggan has indicated that it, it fulfills the zoning. Um, it's, it's allowable by zoning. So um, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the point, but that's just a counterpoint. Mr. Norton? May I ask, when did you plan to open up? When did you plan to? Two weeks off, probably after, after the 4th at this point. I still have to be with Jennifer again, fire department, do all my... Make sure I'm so you wouldn't be meeting. opening up until our next meeting anyway? Three weeks. Thank you. Mr. Harris, you have the equipment now? I have most of the equipment. Um, I have to go out and get a griddle or two. I have the friolators. Um, I have plenty of refrigeration. I have a freezer unit, nice uh, lift top freezer. I have a full fridge with, a, with another uh, well, additional freezer capacity. I mean, so I'm all set on that end. Um, I have a steam table. I'm looking to get, uh, you know, kind of like a, uh, an ice box of some sort to just keep everything. But most of the stuff I'm doing is small batches. I'm basically going from the fridge. I, I'm cooking just small amounts when I can. If I'm getting a rush, I'm going to look to bulk that up. But, you know, I've been in the restaurant business since I was 14, so it's over 30 years. Worked as a managing partner at the Outback, uh, Bugaboo Creek back when it was really good. Um, on the board of Mexican Cafe, always as a like a 10% owner of the business. So, you know, I, I, I feel very confident what I'm doing. Let me, Mr. Hanna, yes. would you, and uh, I think I'm, I can't speak for the board members here, but it, I think it sounds like you're going to probably get an approval. My position is yes, I'll, I'll give you approval. The only thing is, is that um, would you be willing to come back? We're not meeting in two weeks, but we'll be meeting in three weeks. I think uh, it's not the six. July 13th, would that be? I would say I probably need that much time anyway, so okay. whatever you come to. And the reason why I say that is because I don't want to, like, give you false expectations. Yeah. I'll make sure the board understands that because I don't want you to go out and buy something and then find out that the board decides against it. But I will say this, that, um, you know, um, I, I have no problems with you're in the business zone, number one, uh, and it's tantamount that it's a fixed object. Just as much as if somebody had a storefront that said, guess what, we're going to open up a new restaurant or a takeout. And, and all the difference is, is that you're outside and you have a structure there. Uh, second, um, it's business. Or, you know, if, if you're going to be profitable, people are going to go there. It's the question of the how good is your product. It's and four walls. Yeah, so, you worry about your four walls. You're doing a good job. People yeah, and people are going to go. If you don't, then I'm sorry. That's going to be a problem. The final thing is I've seen this elsewhere. I've seen it being a success. I think you're a little ambitious on your hours, but you know what? I, I commend you on being ambitious. But um, Aside from that, other comments? Mr. Vignani. Just one, I, don't, I don't think, I wouldn't want to hold him off for three weeks if we're just going to approve it then. Right, yes. Because if we're, the only thing that could happen in three weeks, in my opinion, was we would say no because somebody came up with some compelling reason for us to say no. But I don't want him to invest any more time and energy under the false pretense that it's a yes in three weeks. Yeah. So if, if, that's, if you want to vote it now, vote it now. Um, but I don't want to give him the impression that he's getting a yes in three weeks when it may not happen. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I wouldn't want him to go out and, and spend money and then turn around and, and have us, uh, as Tony said, vote no. So I think, uh, right. I guess we go out, we, we bite the bullet and either do it or don't do it. And uh, Well, I'll make a motion and you guys can vote it down or not. I'll, I vote that we wait to, until our next meeting to... Uh, we postpone this to our next meeting. Is there a second on that? I'll second that if I can make uh, for the purpose of discussion. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, uh, I'll vote for this. If we could notify Mr. Berwick uh, if any compelling uh, issues come up that he may want to be aware of that may make us vote no, so he would not go out and buy if, this, if they come up, that's all. I'm not anticipating any at all. I just don't want you to go out and spend a lot of money if then find out that, uh, that we... Don't worry about uh, it. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't I, guess you, I don't want you to borrow a lot of money. <laughs> you know, that's my only thought, I, and I, I would vote for it. Would that be possible, I guess? Well, I guess my point him? is I, I'm a yes. Yeah. Unless a local merchant like we just had five minutes ago comes before us and says, 
here's a reason that you guys didn't think of that it's not a good yep. idea. And that's my personal opinion. So even in a situation like that, you have to have that community, you know, kind of brotherhood or whatever you want to call it, presence where you're able to, you know, kind of be respectful of what somebody else, especially when somebody's established. <coughs> that's, you know, that's one thing. But that person, the hot dog vendor, does have the right to do that. But that being said, I, I don't think they're particularly following the rules. Yeah. But That's if someone came in the week certain... after you and said, I want to put a hot dog vendor right across the, the right. parkway from them, then we'd have to consider right. that. You know, exactly. that's, so, that's, and I, you know, uh, I don't have a strong feeling on it. I'm just, Mr. No, Mr. Harris? Not just hot dogs. <laughs> I was just a little confused. I thought Tony, with what you were saying, I, w I was going to say, why wait? And thought Tony was right on board until at the end he said, in two or three weeks, why make them come back? Vote it up right now if we're going to do it. The only thing I see is if, you know, an established business, you know, they're going to say, like um, the woman said earlier, they pay taxes, but I'm sure he's going to be paying rent. And so let's, we, you know. So vote my motion down and put a new motion in. I, that's, that's where I thought yeah. you were going until the end. That's why I was confused. I looked at Rick and I think he said, thought the same with thing. I, I Happen to okay, Sean. so why don't we do this? Let's. We've got a motion, seconded by Mr. N uh, Mr. Norton. All in favor of the motion or, or discussion? Any further discussion on it? No. Seeing none. Any in the audience? Seeing none. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Two in favor. Any against? Aye. Nay. Aye. Nay. So three against two. Okay, motion fails. Is there a second motion? Will the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the common Vic and Hawkers Peddler's license to Hammerhead's Grill, 17 Driftway, Situa, to operate a food concession trailer, which is non-mobile, to serve food in compliance with all regulations set forth by the Board of Health? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Any discussion from the Board? Seeing none. Any discussion from the floor? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any against say nay. Nay. It's four to one. Thank you very much, Mr. Hanning. Good right. luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Appreciate it. All right, moving on to agenda item number 9A. It's a discussion vote one day wine and malt beverage license to St. Mary's Parish. On behalf of St. Mary's Parish, if you could come up and identify yourselves, ladies. Good evening, gentlemen. Betsy Krupe. Good evening, Nancy DeCoste. Your addresses, also, please, just for oh. your address. Oh. 58 Ann Vinyl Road. 22 Bell Tower Lane. Okay. And ladies, you are looking on behalf of St. Mary's to be able to have a one-day wine and malt beverage license for June 27th. That's yes. a Saturday from 1 till 6 p.m. Sunday. And the, or Sunday, I'm sorry. I said Saturday, my mistake. Uh, for a, I, it looks like a parish function. Is that what I understand it to yes, be? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Any discussion from the board or questions? I'm sorry. Any questions from the board? Saying none. Any dis um Questions from the audience? Fair enough. Uh, is there a motion? Motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the con I got the wrong one, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Here, I got one. I got Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one day wine and malt beverages license to St. Mary of the Nativity Parish Center on 1 Ken Street for their annual family cookout on Sunday, June 27th from 1 to 6. Is Sorry. there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Norris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Ladies, thank you very much and good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 10, a discussion vote for the request for proposal of Uplands Project concerning the Situate Marine Park. And on behalf of the applicant, I think it's Mr. Patterson, uh, Mr. Mur Murphy, and Mr. Kevin, uh, Kevin. Cafferty. 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 Kevin, I am so sorry. I was going to say Creedon, and I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Gentlemen, could you please just briefly explain to us what you're looking for? Uh, yes, we're requesting um, that a contract be awarded to Tibbetts Engineering um, t for uh, professional engineering services for design, engineering, and permitting of upland improvements to the Situate Marine Park uh, to include walking trails, um, light, site lighting, landscaping. Um, this is sort of the park part of the Situate Marine Park. Uh, it's a community preservation project. Um, and we appreciate that very much. Um, we had, um, I, I think we had six or, or seven um, firms take out uh, the request for proposals. Um, we looked at the proposals in two different ways. There was a technical fee approach that we looked at first and subsequently looked at the fee 
uh, proposal um, based on um, first the technical proposal um, and secondly the fee proposal the um, proposal uh, by Tibbetts engineering uh, was seen as the the best and most advantageous of the town so we are uh, recommending and requesting that the board award the contract to Tibbetts engineering for thirty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars um, just um, two quick questions if I may um, first is is, 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 when I looked at this, the disc discrepancy between the <laughs> first and the second, is that realistic? I mean, it, 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 my question that came to, head, came to my mind was, is it possible that they completely way underbid the whole thing and then will walk off the project given what they're doing? That was the first question I had. And I think, Kevin, probably it's in your We domain. looked at the proposals and, and we thought it was reasonable. Um, they did a joint venture with a landscaped architect and Tibbetts had put the project together. We liked their proposal in the first place. Um, coastline seemed like they were doing it all themselves, but a lot of the plantings and everything probably isn't their expertise. Um, so I, I'm not sure how they had it set up and they get into a lot of different permits. Um, we sat down and we met with um, the principals that would be involved uh, with Tibbetts and with the uh, landscape architect firm and they were confident that they could handle the project and do it and they had a uh, they had a very extensive resume of projects that they had done say, say no more that makes me the second question I had is 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 it going to be somewhat handicap accessible so that we don't have everything would be handicap accessible Perfect. Um, that's, 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 that's all I need to hear <laughs> Mr. Vignani. Uh, just, is this just for the engineering or is this actually the work? This is just the engineering. So all they're going to do is give you f layouts of put a tree here, put well, a bridge it's here. It's actually bridge. dune replication also, wetlands dune replication, any permits that we'd need, renewal for permits, um, and for the walking trails, site lighting for, um, I believe one of the other things is movement of one of the buildings of, of providing um, plans and potential upgrades for the electric system also. So again, it's just plans. No one's blazing any trails no, or building no any things or putting up any put lights. It it's just for and, the And engine. a lot of these were done kind of partially. This hopefully encompasses everything and closes out the whole project. Right. And where's the money coming from? Community preservation. CPM. Mm. Motion, Mr. Chair. Other questions just before we do? Any questions from the audience? Sure. Mr. Yeah, the other thing I was going to add before the motion is, you know, here we have engineering and we've got the Harbor Master and the Waterways Committee and all three groups have been working hand in hand together real well on bringing this to fruition. And it's sort of the last, it's the start of the last phase of everything we were talking about when we bought the Marine Park four or five, six years ago now. It being, you know, not just for the boaters, but for the whole open public, for people to enjoy off season and on season with walking trails. And this gets us going down that final piece of the puzzle. Is that in the form of a motion? Uh, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for improvements to the Situate Marine Park, including coastal dune replication, walking trails, landscape design, and site lighting to Tibbetts Engineering Corp for a low bid of $39,999. Is there a second? $990. Second. All right. Discussion from the Board? Seeing one, none. One last question. Oh, yep. Is this money already, uh, uh, is this money left over from an existing article? This money has been voted and appropriated. And appropriated. The money and you have more here. money left over after that to actually do the work. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Mr. Roberts, if you could just, uh, Scott, could you just identify yourself? Scott Roberts. Uh, dress. Is the money coming from the yeah. waterways? This is a community preservation project. It's a CPA. Yes. Oh. Good. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, folks. All right, moving on to agenda item number um, 11. It's a discussion vote, water rate increase. And Mr. Bangert. And um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Mr. Uh, DeBarros, thank you. Yes, I want to introduce you to Mr. Jim DeBarros, who is the interim uh, water superintendent for the town of Situate, been filling in uh, uh, following Gene Babin's retirement on February 28th, doing a very nice job, thank you. So this is his chance to uh, shine in front of the crowd here. So go ahead and Jim and lead the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Jim. Yeah, no, I won't, I won't do that to you. Okay, right. the uh, Department of Public Works initiated a capital, capital program three or maybe now four years ago to upgrade the town's very old uh, water distribution system, which was installed initially in 1902. Uh, this has led to the horrendous uh, problem of uh, literally uh, weekly water main breaks, which cause disturbances in the system, stir everything up, uh, people lose service as well as stirs up uh, on, uh, brown water issues. Um, and also the fact that the pipes are old and rusty and, and they're difficult to clean. So 
the uh, Board of Selectmen instructed the department to proceed at a pace that was of uh, replacing these uh, this important infrastructure at a rate that can be funded by no more than a 5% increase in rates per year. We've done this for several years now. Uh, the Water Department proposes that we make a, a water usage rate increase across the board of 5% effective July 1st, and this will allow us to continue to move forward. The, uh, the change of plus 5% is on that little chart right in front of you. This results in an increase for the average typical household user from $350 a year for their water to $386 per year for their water, or an $18 increase. 368. 368. I'm, I apologize. Yeah, an $18 per year increase. Um, our rates still um, remain very competitive in the region. We're among the lowest in southeast Massachusetts. Um, after the uh, proposed rate increase, if you look at the 11 uh, towns surrounding us, um, we fall in position number nine uh, with Cohasset rates uh, at around $919 per family, but I think it's gone up recently. Uh, Hingham in that same range, Hull in that same range, Weymouth and Duxbury in the mid to high 400s, Norwell in the mid at 450, Rockland at 426, Marshfield at 379, Situate at 368. Uh, Pembroke is a little lower at 333, and Plymouth is a lot lower because of the, the heavy uh, industrial base they have. It keeps their rates low, I guess. Um, so with that, um, what we'll do is we will take the uh, additional revenue. <coughs> will all be dumped, uh, will all be put back into the system for replacing pipes. Uh, we're working on uh, replacing the lines on Tilden, Stockbridge, uh, cleaning and lining of the remaining section of Country Way. Um, working on uh, replacing the lines on Hollett, and then uh, in the following year working on replacing the lines on Hadley Road in the mining area uh, as part of that, uh, done at the same time as we do the sewer project if that happens. Any questions from the board? Mr. Murray. Yeah, I completely support this, and I, I really enjoy the presentation. And, you know, we started doing this a couple of years ago, and we're really seeing uh, tangible benefits and this is outstanding one question I, I just have for for just future reference that listing you provided does show that our annual cost for the average family is way down on that list um, it's actually not a rate though that's an annual cost at so another way of interpreting that for example Cohasset could have a lower rate but they could use the average house could use a lot more water no actually uh, this as I, listed but go if ahead. I could speak to that sure so that you don't uh, just, I'm just clarify curious. the yeah, yeah. calculation. The calculation here is actually done by an independent third party, Ty and Bond, uh, who does a survey of water rates throughout Massachusetts. And then they, they take uh, what it costs for your uh, monthly meter charge, what it costs for your first this, that, and the other, and calculates for the average family using 12,000 cubic feet of water per year. Okay, so that this calculates out in right. Cohasset to 919 okay. and to situate. So this is normalized to a constant use. A so constant, therefore, yes. it does track through to a different to a, to a rate. Okay, correct. Great. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Vignani. Yeah. If I remember correctly, w this was a five-year plan that we that actually Joe and Sean. I don't know if you were here when the first time when I was. when that was agreed to. So is this year five of that or four? I think this is year four of that. Tony. Okay. I think it's great. I mean, one of the biggest complaints we get is brown water, and this is the only way to fix it. Yep. You know, you can go in Al's office, and he'll show you a piece of pipe that shows what causes this stuff. And if we don't keep investing in the infrastructure, um, you know, it's just going to continue to fall apart. So I think it's great work, and this is, you know, you can see our rates a, are still. And there's two aspects to it, too. There's the the... Um, it takes a long time for pipes to degrade, but on the other hand, it's been a long time since 1902. Right. Uh, on the other hand, um, there are some immediate things that, that uh, can be done and that uh, Mr. DeBarro started this year, which was a very aggressive flushing program with um, a very high public awareness of that program. Now, we still had some glitches. You'll find people who had uh, some uh, terrible situations beset upon them. Uh, we're going to continue to do that flushing. We think this first flush was the worst flush. We're going to continue to flush, and Mr. DeBarros will monitor that, uh, and we'll do it probably twice per year until we're sure we've got this system straightened out. We want the consumer confidence back. Mr. Right. Norton. Yeah, just to follow up on Tony's uh, comments, it was a five-year program. It's the fourth year. It f so if we did nothing tonight, okay, water increase will go up 5% started July 1st. We did nothing because of the vote we took. Yes. 
Yes. Five years ago, four years ago. No. No, you have to vote. You 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 wanted to reserve the right to increase it every to make the decision. So every we year. didn't vote at that time to increase it automatically five percent every year. Correct. Thought we did. You wanted but, to reevaluate the system. Okay. Each year, so this is not any great increase over and above what we voted four years ago. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Harris. <clears throat> at what point I had toured the uh, water treatment plant? At what point <clears throat> will you be satisfied that our distribution system is updated to the point where you might go back to the plant because I was talking to a longtime plumber mm -hmm. Tom Galligan in town and said that you, that our plant is really outdated but the water looks very clean when it leaves your plant Jimmy. Um, so it's I the, the we, while while you're both here and Kevin's here the plants processing uh, uh, properly we meet all the state regulations and everything and all the monitoring is done properly and everything so we're meeting all the standards that we need to do that but what the problem is is the infrastructure and the pipes that are really causing the problems and the discoloration. So you continue to do that for us yeah. until we yeah. get yeah. that updated. Yeah. All right. I'm happy because the quality of the water that leaves the plant is excellent. Right. I've seen yeah. that right. The other thing that, that Mr. DeBarros is starting on is uh, uh, bringing is uh, uh, redeveloping our wells. Our over time, wells produce less and less as they become more and more clogged, if you will, um, and by fracking the wells, you create more uh, water capability from our wells, which reduces the need to run the more expensive treatment plant uh, as often. So we can, uh, we're looking at not only just raising rates, but how can we find more efficient ways of producing the water and the water supply that we need um, to lower the internal cost as well. Mr. Murray. Yeah, just two things. Um, one to Sean, your point. Um, I think it was within the last two years that they replaced the GAC bed, the, the activated carbon bed in the plant. So they have been doing a lot of upgrades to the plant as well um, to, help, to help keep the plant going. And uh, I think that came forth as part of a capital plan maybe three years ago or two years ago or something. So that's one of the reasons why the plant is, is continuing to do well. And then, Joe, to your point, um, yeah, we did say we would like to revisit the rates each year, but we wanted to give a clear message to DPW for their long-term planning purposes that unless everything went you know, wacky, they could expect us to continue with the 5% per year, particularly considering that we were down on the low end of the, of, the, of the rate scale then, as we continue to be. I'm very surprised to see in a good way that our rates are still in the lower 20% of our neighboring communities, despite the fact we've put in 5% increases um, uh, each year for the last three years. Motion? Um, move that the board select and vote to increase water service and usage rates by 5% effective <laughs> July 1, 2010. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Uh, discussion? Any discussion? Questions from the audience? Saying none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Sounds like Thank it's 3-0. Three, three, uh, five, five, five. Five. It's unanimous. I, I didn't hear it. So sorry. Didn't. Thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item number uh, 12. It is a discussion vote for fiscal year 11, or 2011, uh, the uh, general liability and related insurance. Um, Tricia, would you like to address this? In your packet that outlines the bid results for going out to bid on the town's general liability, police and fire, and marina policies insurance um, in keeping with some of the actions the board has taken earlier this year voiding um, uh, contracts um, we went out to bid on the this coverage and as you can see it paid off over prior budgetary line items that we've been appropriating so I would ask for the board's approval for the FY11 coverage in the amount of three hundred eighty seven thousand four hundred eighty nine dollars Questions from the board? Just a comment. Uh, it looks like it's a savings of almost $80,000. 90, 93. 90, 93,000. That's just for the insurance coverage. I still want to hold some back because we have never budgeted for deductibles. Mm -hmm. So when we do have property losses during the year. So. Right. But I'd say there's still significant savings there. Great. Mr. Harris? Is this something you thought of? I, I, I just wrote a note to Joe that I don't remember seeing this. On an annual well, basis. Well, that's why we went out to bid. The board has to vote any contract over 25000 The prior contract was not authorized by the board, so I voided it. Thank you. 
Like I said earlier, I love modesty. Yes, she did. Um, Mr. Murray. I was just going to point that out. You pointed <laughs> out how Dave Glancy was very modest, and I was just going to thank you, Tricia. I'm sure I'm speaking for the board on this. This was entirely your discovery and your effort, and you just saved the town 93000 Questions from the audience? Seeing none? <laughs> thank you. Um, is there a motion? Move. Or is there a question? Did you have one or Ms. No, no, no. Motion, Mr. Vignani. Move the Board of Selectmen award the town's fiscal year 11 insurance coverage to the Joseph Insurance Agency for a bid quote of $387,489. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. Discussion from the floor. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Very good. Uh, moving on to our next item, which is the uh, vote year-end transfers. Um. Um, again, memo in your packet about um, the annual uh, dance, I guess, for lack of a better word, that municipalities have as the fiscal year ends, and they're trying to project out any, any account shortfalls or any surpluses that they can identify to cover those shortfalls. The town has a reserve fund that has $90,000 in it, and I'm happy to say, as I note in the memo, that we have not used any of that as of June 22nd today, which um, I don't know is a first, but is pretty unusual. Um, so what, and, and in, in accordance with the statute that changed about three years ago, um, in May and June, the board, with the approval of the advisory committee, can take identified surpluses and other line items and move them to cover other account shortfalls and line items. So, Mary, if you want to come up, because I know you're hiding back there. Um, Mary and I have met several times over the past two weeks to identify those accounts that um, need some administrative votes and changes to move money around. The financial trend report that you folks have seen um, this year and the fact that um, we've done a few changes as far as um, writing heard on departments for expenditures has um, allowed us to pretty much be in good shape so um, we're not in danger at this point of um, having significant financial challenges as we head into FY11. So the attached, and I can provide any different uh, additional explanation or detail that you have, the top part is what is really an account shortfall that's not due to an emergency or unforeseen expenditure. It's just the account went over what we budgeted. Um, legal expenses particularly is one that's very hard to project from year to year. Um, tax title the board knows about. Jane has told you about the very aggressive stance the town is taking on any delinquencies relative to taxes. Postage is a yearly thing and then Labor Council, as you know, all five of our union contracts are expired, so those costs in the year that the contracts are being negotiated are always going to be higher. So um, we've identified surpluses in debt service in the fire department and would ask for a motion to approve those in that amount to cover those um, deficits. Motion, Mr. Chairman? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the initial listing of reserve fund transfers and line item transfers as recommended by the Town Administrator. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Uh, discussion from the Board? Seeing none, any questions from the audience? Mr. Roberts. Just a question on the advisory committee role on those transfers at this point. You, once the Board votes them, Scott, then the advisory committee has to have a meeting by July 15 to approve them all. I gave a preliminary list of this to Bob Lorenzo two weeks ago, so he knows that you have to have a meeting. Um, the second part of this is reserve funds transfers. As I've noted, uh, reserve fund transfers are by statute for emergency or unforeseen circumstances. Historically, we really have not used it in that manner. However, the ones that you see there are items that were not anticipated or were emergencies during the last fiscal year, specifically under legal services, although you approve some above because the budget's hard to project. The other expenditure here was unforeseen. 99% of that is for the Pier 44 work and the Wampatuck override and associated town meeting stuff uh, for our town council to do. That was obviously unanticipated. Street lights in February received a 14% increase notice from um, 
National Grid, temporary conservation agent during the medical uh, absence of uh, the conservation agent that we'd had to do, veteran service benefits for increased benefits uh, that the federal government authorized, and the last one in the highest amount is for DPW personal services, which uh, were as a result of three retirements in the DPW and um, um, accumulated benefits in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement that those individuals were owed at the time of retirement. Questions, Mr. Vignani? So the last one you explained, it's a one-time expense, so we don't have to worry about it fiscal year 2011. Have the other shortfalls been incorporated in fiscal year 11 budget? Yes. I mean, the only other very large one, well, street lights, I assume we put that at the increased rate. Yep. And then the Labor Council, do we expect that to be as high next year? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> not from the town, I hope. hope not. That budget was already increased in FY11, so yes, it will be less, but not a lot, probably. So, um, so anyways, we've taken into account these increases as we go into the next year's budget. It's really hard to project a retirement yeah. a year in advance. We're doing, a, you know, departments are submitting their budgets the first week in December. So you're saying anybody who can retire 18 months out from that, even longer, we need, we can't. Yeah, that one I, that it's one I understand. Really and but it's a big number. Yeah. All right. Mayor, did you have anything you want to add? No, I'm all. Mr. Harris. Just one quick question. Trisha or Al maybe might have the answer for this. <clears throat> the energy companies are coming into our homes to replace lighting like they did here at Town Hall. Is there any programs that will do that in street lights? Yes, in the, um, at the Renewable Energy Committee is looking at that, and Al and I have actually talked about this. This is actually lower than it probably would have been because we voided the current electricity costs last fall and went with the default rate for National Grid. So it's actually less than it probably would have been had that not happened. But Al's very much aware of it, and we have some ideas in terms of our street light inventory and replacing more effective lighting and things like that. Thank you. Other questions? Any questions from the audience? All right. Um, we already have a motion. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Very good. All right. Hey, um, anybody has a cell phone, please turn it off. And anybody who has a hat on, please take it off. Um, we'd like to move on to the next agenda item, number 14. It is a discussion on the beach sticker policy. And um, Mr. Vignani had requested this. And... Um, I guess um, if you'd like, sure. if you want to just, Tony, kind of yeah, inform I, what, we're, what, what we're doing. Yeah, what I um, what I wanted to do is just bring this topic back up for for conversation and consideration. Um, we have, uh, you know, we the, a committee got together and made some proposals for some policy for for the selectmen to make, and we did. And since that time, we've gotten a lot of feedback, um, and had time to reconsider some of it, um, and I have some opinions on, on whether we should reconsider the price um, and I just wanted to have some some open discussion on that um, my concerns are a few number one I think we have a unique re relationship with Marshfield where we rely on them for some stuff and and where they are actually closer to our beach Humrock Beach anyways than we are um, and I think it's important to keep that relationship strong um, the rate did go up a lot of money it went up 800 percent and um, at this point in time, based on the numbers we just got today, I think we've sold 10 Marshfield stickers um, compared to 300 in the prior years. So it's clearly had a big impact on, on um, the revenue there. I'm a little confused on the sheet that we got, but I just wanted to make sure I understood the budget for the beach not enterprise fund but the beach operations and then um, my suggestion is to reduce that that ticket amount or the the sticker amount make it um, solely usable in Hummer Rock and um, have an increase in revenue and the potential of selling more tickets at a, at a reduced rate um, my proposal would be somewhere in the hundred dollar to ninety dollar rate 
Um, my other concern is for the businesses in the area. If people aren't going to the beaches there, then I think that it will have a detrimental effect on the, on the few uh, situate beaches over there. Um, those are the points of discussion that I wanted to, to bring up and uh, get the feedback from the board. Just so that people understand that um, the board, was it April? or May. I forgot when we enacted the February. policy. February. Okay. Um, uh, there was a, c a committee put together, uh, uh, employee, uh, town employees, um, including uh, town administrator, um, to take a look into this potential policy to create for opening up the town of Situate Beaches to non-residents. And the committee came back, uh, made some suggestions, the board voted on it. Um, and as it presently stands, um, just by way of background, so people who are sitting here and, and people who are watching, um, if there is a non-resident, this does not apply to situate, res situate residents, but non-residents, uh, they are to pay $200 um, for a sticker to be able to access all of Situate beaches. And so um, that, I think, is that fair to act, uh, is that a fair representation yep. of what the policy is presently? This is not, we're not talking about Situate residents here, so. Um, the only change, the change from historically, it had been that Marshfield residents could buy it at the town, at the town rate. Situate town rate. rate. Right. I, I should back that up. It, it, aside from the sheer, uh, Marshfield residents had the uh, ability to purchase a, a, a sticker to go to Hummer Rock um, at the town rate that the Situate town people would pay. Um, Mr. Murray. If I may, through the chair, ask Tony a question. So, Tony, your proposal, just for clarification, is to keep the this is correct. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to know. I want to make sure I know mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's to keep it for 200 for non-Marshfield residents. So basically, have three stickers. Have a situate resident sticker, which is for situate residents, all beaches, including Hummerock. A Marshfield residents only, and only to be used at Hummerock at like 100. Right. And all non-residents, including Marshfield, if they wish, 200 for all situate beaches. Right. Is that correct? So there would be three different. Well, I believe the two are the same, <coughs> right? Is there a different sticker for, is there a different color sticker for resident and non-resident? No, it's the, the same staff, sticker, but the price. on the non-resident of 300, the first 300 were taken off the top, and those are non-resident. Yeah, right. so but it's, it's the same. It's the yeah. same sticker, but I different meant price different structure. price structure. Yeah. yeah, it's the same colored little sticker, but I mean, there's three different tiers of right. T I E R S of of payment. Right. Okay. Thanks. I just wanted to make sure I knew what you were proposing. Right. That's what I'm just bringing up for discussion. Okay. Mr. Norton. Yes, I, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I. Uh, I was happy the board suggested that it that it go back to the the committee to look at it, and at the time we suggested that I had said that I would abide by their by their reconsideration of the issue. If they came up and said uh, to reduce it, that was fine with me. If they said stay, keep it the same, that also was fine with me. Uh, after meeting again, my understanding is they voted to uh, keep it the same this year. And to relook at it uh, when, they, when they put this together next year, and I strongly suggest, you know, would like to see them relook at it uh, for next year. I uh, accept their their uh, their thoughts that it would be very difficult to change it this year. And again, as I say, when I when we suggested it to go back to the committee, I had made up my mind that. Whatever they came back with was my, is what I would support. So uh, they come back with keeping it the same for this year. I'll support that with the strong recommendation that they uh, relook at it, that aspect of it, the $200 for Marshfield. Uh, strongly look at that again next year. Thank you. Mr. Harris. Couldn't agree more with Joe. The, we, we ask committees to do stuff and then if we don't follow their recommendations, who's going to be so willing to jump, sit on a committee? Is it perfect? No. But I just think it might be a little too late in the season to change it right now. I would, like Joe said, I would strongly try to, con to, to convince this committee that this gets changed. And I, I couldn't agree more with you, Tony. I like the idea. 
for next year. I like the idea of what you said, but it's just, it's, it's too late. I, I get the phone calls, I get the emails from people that grew up in such a raised families, moved to Marshfield, and have been going to the Humrock beaches for many years, Humrock Beach. So they were quite upset. Is it, like I said, though, it's not perfect, but it is, it's kind of late right now to change it, in my opinion. Mr. Vignani. Yeah, if I can just respond to that. I think um, I appreciate all the work that the committee did. I think they looked into it time and time again and came up with stuff and did all the research. I think when, when we find that something's wrong, we're the policy setting entity in the town, and I, I think that you correct, you correct it right away. I think by both of you saying that we should strongly recommend looking at it next year is almost some sort of uh, agreement that, there's, that the policy should be reconsidered. And I, I don't know why we would wait to reconsider it. I think what's going to happen over the years, you're going to create bad will and put stress on a relationship with the neighbor that we rely on. I think that um, there's a lot of citizens that uh, are going to be affected in terms of um, business in that area. And I, I think if, if we, it's our duty, if we think that something is incorrect, that we should correct it as, as quickly as possible. And I'm not trying to burden anybody in town hall by having them have to do any more work. I also see an opportunity to make revenue. I think that there's going to be a lot of people that just flat out aren't going to buy stickers and that that's going to be potentially tens of thousands of dollars that the town is not going to have. Um, so I think it's a, it's a win-win. I think that uh, if, if we as a collective board believe that, that something's wrong, that we should fix it right away. And I think that, uh, that, that that's what we should do in this case. Questions from the audience? Um, a number of hands, so we'll get to everybody. Um, I'll tell you what, hold off for one second, Mr. Uh, Bangert. Um, if I could start over here with Ms. Burbine. Could you state your name and, yes, your address? I'll do that for you. The difference is this year it's $2,000 from the 10 because 10 times 20, uh, 200 is 2,000. And last year, because the residents had 314 at $25, so 7,850. So the difference is $5,850. That's the difference that we're talking about. Uh, Mr. Um, hold on, hold on. You're, you've already had your chance. Mr. Burbine, we're going to go to the next gentleman. Could you Scott state Brad, your name? Brad White from Marshfield. Don't yes. Uh, I'm a user of that beach area uh, three times a week, and an 800% increase in anything in life is over the top. That sticker should be no more than $35 because what we're creating with the $200 sticker is great private enterprise for people sprouting up cottage industry parking lots at 5 to $10 a pop, and that town is a ghost town right now. When we take a look at the Sands End Cafe, who weathered the storm of a uh, bridge redo, Humming Rock Gifts, the pet supply store down there, these folks are dying on the vine in a tough economy. So with a $200 ticket, we are dissuading any resident from using that beautiful beach. So my recommendation is if you need to increase, maybe, is it now $25 or $35? What, what is it, car? It's t what was it? Thirty-five dollars. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Thirty-five for a situate resident. So, so go to thirty-five. Invite people to the beach. It's one of the last free recreational resources we have, and it will help stimulate and help these businesses that only have sixteen weekends a year. And if you do the math, only forty percent through the summer. It's very easy to make a pen keystroke to change the rate from two hundred down to thirty-five or forty. And I strongly recommend that. We need to support these merchants. She's paying at the Sands End Cafe, she reported ten, eight to $10,000 in taxes. That tax money won't happen if she doesn't have a tax base. So let's, let's encourage people to come visit the beautiful beach of Hum Rock and not spoof them by charging usurious rates. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a Duxbury Beach rate. And people who <laughs> are buying Duxbury Beach tickets have declined significantly when they increase that from 150 to 250 or almost $300. So my recommendation is change it now. Thank you. 
The gentleman in the back, could you state your name and address, please? I'm John Hall from Marshville, a member of the Marshville Select Board. And I wanted to come by tonight and ask uh, uh, the board's consideration in this. I uh, live less than a mile from Hummer Rock Beach. I bought my house in Marshville because of the proximity to Hummer Rock. Uh, Green Harbor is a section of Marshville, but that's not my neighborhood. Brent Rock is a section of Marshville, but that's not my neighborhood. My neighborhood is the Seaview Hummer Rock section of Marshville and City. I was by the beach there on uh, Saturday. There was 12 cars in the park lot on Saturday. I was there on Sunday. There was 15 cars in the park lot. There was 27 cars on the two days, and there was probably enough room for what? What's a park lot hold? 60, 70 cars? But there was 27 in the two days, and both days were beach days. And out of those stickers, there was no 2010 Situate Beach sticker. Most of them, uh, like 22 out of the 27, had white Marshfield Hummer Rock Beach stickers that we bought last year. There was no 2010 stickers in the park. And that's what's going to happen this summer. Uh, people just aren't going to spend that kind of money. And the parking lot is going to be empty. People from Situate did not travel over to, to Hummer Rock to go to the beach. Nor did we go over to the other uh, Situate beaches. We had our own color that, you, that your board in the town uh, provided for us. And everybody was always appreciative of that. Because everybody feels if you live less than a mile, that's your neighborhood. And everybody took a kind of person in my neighborhood that we just, uh, we just like anybody else from anybody in town, despite the unique geographical uh, situation they have with Situ. And I would urge the board to please recommend a, uh, a lowering and a separate color beach sticker like we've always enjoyed in the past. And I know myself, I can't talk for everybody, but I think the fee of $50, which would be double of what we paid last year, uh, everybody in my part of town would be very comfortable with that. And your own uh, merchants, with your with tax bases in, in uh, Hummer Rock, I'm sure they would mirror my feelings to get that exactly. Thank you very much, Joe. Mr. Mr. Hall, thank you very much. It's always, a, uh, it's always a, it's nice to have um, selectmen from surrounding towns come and appreciate it and encourage uh, you, other board members, to anything that's uh, important to please come. Um, if my, my understanding is Marshfield has five public beaches, Wrexham, Fieldstone, Sunrise, Brant, and Green Harbor? Yes. How many, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, do you know how many uh, non-resident beach stickers Marshfield has? We don't have that option. Okay, so situate residents cannot go to Marshfield beaches? Sure, you can by a day pass, but we can't get a full year-round pass that we're offering to March, Marshall residents. Is that correct? We, have, uh, we do have resident-only stickers, but right. like I yeah. said, the unique situation is that situate residents from the other side of the bridge don't come to Hummer Rock, and we don't go over to the other side of Situate. It's just because I live less than a mile from the beach that that's why we frequent that beach, because of the geographic location. No other reason. Okay. But I guess my point is, is that unless Situate residents, unlike Marshfield residents, they have an opportunity to buy a year-round pass for $200 to come to Situate, as well as Norwell, Cohasset, surrounding towns, and their whole list, as far as I think Burlington, actually, we as Situate residents don't have an opportunity to buy a, uh, a year-round pass to go to any of these beaches other than a day pass. That's the only option that we have from Situate to Marshfield. Other questions, um, or, or just a, Mr. Norton? Just a comment. Uh, Mr. Hall was uh, instrumental in, in, in uh, procuring the signatures on the petitions, the 150 or 200 signatures that you all had a, an opportunity to look. I just want to acknowledge the fact that he, uh, he brought that to our attention and presented those, position, those petitions to the board, so thank you. Mr. Bangert, you're here on behalf of the uh, Beach Sticker Committee, if I'm not mistaken, and you wrote a memorandum to the board basically listing what the committee had um, evaluated, reconsidered, and then uh, ultimately <coughs> concluded that in the opinion of the committee, it did not support entertaining discussion of any changes at this time. And basically, right. uh, first of all, I'll recognize that this is, uh, this is not about using situate beaches at all. Uh, anyone from Humrock, there, there, there is no uh, bicycle parking sticker, 
for the beaches. There is no walk across the bridge sticker for the beaches. This is simply about using situate parking lots, which, by the way, are in absolutely miserable shape. That's the background. The last fall, the selectman asked the town administrator to recommend a way to fix the beach cost structure. Much like a year before that was recommended, let's fix the transfer station cost structure, uh, where the transfer station users uh, and the costs were not being paid appropriately, so as a result, the situate taxpayer ended up paying for much of the cost of, uh, some of the cost of the transfer station. That is clearly the case with the maintenance of the beach operation. Uh, you requested that ultimately beach users, not taxpayers, pay for the cost of maintaining these areas. So the committee was formed and analyzed the situation and determined that in, in the fiscal year 2010, the current year we're in, they were just finishing, and not counting next year's revenue, that the annual revenue for the beach sticker was $116,000 a year. Now, first of all, two-thirds of that went to the schools, and the remaining uh, $40,000 was then used to operate and maintain the beaches, the parking lots, do the repairs, line striping, et cetera. With that $40,000, the first thing we did was we went out and hired $130,000 worth of lifeguards, spent $9,000 on trash pickup, $8,000 in police enforcement, $4,000 in public health water testing, $18,000 in dead seed weed removal, $2,000 in toilet rental, and $7,000 in printing and postage for stickers and the multiple, multiple stickers that we had. It's a good thing we're not in for a profit then on this. So the 116 in total revenue, and, and certainly not the $40,000, did not come close to covering that $178,000 worth of cost that's generally subsidized now by the situate taxpayers. And has been for how many years? And has been forever. Forever. Now, the committee, therefore, that's why we're trying to fix something. If something's not right, if something's broke, you try to fix it. So the committee uh, was charged with fixing that. Um, they did a competitive analysis versus other communities and made recommendations to the Board of uh, Selectmen. And after the Board's vote, uh, the committee then duly executed this plan, and it's, it's been underway. Um, the financial plan raised the cost for all users. Let's be clear on that. Situate residents, uh, the beach cost for situate residents went up $66,000. More revenue, $66,000. Relatively few complaints. The committee also recommended that the town had an opportunity to raise more money by making a limited number of stickers available to non-residents. Open the field. We projected that this would raise an additional $55,000 in revenue and would close the gap between those high costs and the lack of revenue coming in. So the price for these non-resident stickers was based upon a, an analysis of neighboring towns. Other beach towns allow non-residents to buy passes for their beaches at the 175 to 225 rate, namely Duxbury, Plymouth, Yarmouth, Falmouth, Orleans, Wellfleet, and Brewster, all which have uh, stickers for non-residents, uh, have them at that range. So that's how the price was established. Um, uh, nearby Marshfield and Cohasset don't allow any non-residents the use of their beaches, but so they, that, that didn't count into it in terms of the uh, seasonal pass. Now, has it worked? Well. As of last week, the town sold 114 non-resident stickers, primarily to our neighbors in Norwell, Hingham, and, and in some in 10 in Marshfield. This provides the town already with the $23,000. The money to operate and fix these beaches, uh, these parking lots and the beaches, is really needed, desperately needed by the town. If you look at our beach parking lots, for instance, which tends to fall into my venue as a DPW guy, um, much of the lot at Peggotty is below water at high tide, and we recently had an unfortunate situation where a new situate school teacher was at the beach, uh, came back, and her tar car was completely destroyed because the water had come up beyond the level of her doors and the, the car was totaled. We can't have that situation. We've got to fix that parking lot if we are asking people to pay to use that parking lot. Secondly, the second lot at Minot can't be line striped because it's just uh, not possible line striping. It's not paved or anything. The result is weekly, on the weekends, the police are called out because people's cars are blocked in because of random parking and cars are towed and people are on the beach questioning whose car is the black Toyota and could we move it, etc. Uh, and then both the Hummer Rock and Egypt lots are in terrible shape and need to be paved, line striped, clean, swept. Um, 
And of course, there's opportunities in all of them to improve handicap accessibility, handicap toilets, handicap ramps that are better than what we have now. So the, it's, it's really, unfortunately, it's all about the money. We don't have enough money to run our beaches. We want to sell non-resident stickers. $200 is a good price based upon what all of our neighboring beaches that sell non-resident stickers sell them for. And we're successful at that in that last year, our non-resident sticker total income was $7,000. Already this year is $23,000. And the line was out the door this morning, or this evening, this evening. So for I'm non, very comfortable. For non-residents? That was a non-resident line? I don't know tonight. how many non-residents we sold. I can't tell you that. But So this only counts through last week. Uh, last year, non-resident stickers were $7,000. This year, $23,000. Um, and... You know, it's not like, you know, I've heard bandied about that, oh, gee, we're, uh, we're getting a great deal on water in Humra on, in Marshfield, and we ought to account for the water in Marshfield, but I'm also the water guy, as you know. And the, uh, the water rates are such that our average Hummerock situate user, <laughs> we bill $368 a year for their water. And then we pay, turn around and pay Marshfield $559 for that water. So we pay $191 more for the water than we're able to bill our situate residents for. Meanwhile, Hummer Rock on that side of the, uh, on the side of the other bridge, Marshfield, is billing uh, the water customers the same thing we're billing our water customers, 380. So it's, um, they say it's a two-way street, uh, but that this is not a getcha kind of thing. It's just simply we have uh, Marshfield, Norwell, Hingham, and other towns who want to use our beaches. Some don't have beaches. Uh, we have a chance to open the beaches to those other towns. It seems to me that the fair play is everyone gets to use the Sitchwood beaches if they're willing to pay to play. And with that, I'll back away. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Vignani. The, the only thing I'd say, uh, a couple things that I'd say, is... Um, I support se selling the higher price ticket to the other towns. We have a unique relationship there where the people in that community are actually closer to the beach than we are, and they've been getting this benefit for decades, I would guess. I, I mean, I don't know, but quite a long time. And I think that, that they deserve a little bit of a benefit from this situation. I think as you were saying, Mr. Banger, that, that that will in turn add revenue to our operation because I don't think these 300 or these 304 people are gonna buy the stickers. Um, if you drop the price, you may get 304 more people to buy stickers at a lower price. And if you cut it in half, that's $30,000. If you cut it, uh, you know, it's a big number. Um, so I think that uh, I think that we should take consideration that the people in that area should be able to um, uh, use that. I think it's important to keep a strong relationship with Marshfield. I think we rely on them for public safety. We rely on them for water. Although everybody knows we're paying a, a commercial rate for the water, and you know we'll deal with that at a later time. But um, it's important to keep that relationship strong because, in fact, uh, our two communities are melded at that point. This lady, if you could identify yourself, please. Thank you. Address also. Christina Brown, Humming Rock Gifts, 11 Marshfield Ave, Humming Rock. Thank you. Um, I think the bottom line is is revenue, as as you said, and I I can speak from experience. I've ha owned my store for 27 years. Um, I rarely see a situate resident use our parking lot. It's Marshfield residents who use the, the Hummerock parking lot in Hummerock. And Situate, we, we welcome Situate and we love when Situate comes to visit us. But let's face it, we're off the beaten path and, and they use the Situate beaches, you know, the Situate proper beaches, not Hummerock Beach. And it, that's, that's my only point. My neighbors couldn't have said it any better than then I, I, they say better than I could. They're, uh, it, it's hurting our businesses, um, San Zen Cafe and Humming Rock Gifts and all the other businesses as well because those, uh, uh, most of our rev revenue in that area comes from the Marshfield side. So by um, ostracizing them, you ostracize us and 
it doesn't make any sense to us. So we're asking for that reduced rate. Um, even $50, I think we, we got a kind of a, uh, a consensus with people that um, over $50, Marshfield residents aren't going to pay. They're going to go to Wrexham Beach. They're going to go to all the other beaches because they can buy a sticker for their own town. They won't come to Hummerock. So, uh, you know, within reason, it just makes sense to uh, re reconsider this. Mr. Murray. Just a data point. I'm sure this was said by Mr. Hall or yourself or somebody. So how much is a Marshfield sticker for a Marshfield resident? To go to Wrexham? $30. 30 Okay. So you think if it was $100, ma'am, I understand this is just your opinion, but you think if it was $100, that would have the same prohibit prohibitive effect as a $200? They do. Okay, thank you. They do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, I told you you could get to Thank you. Yeah, this uh, I'm apologizing. Carolyn Howe again. <laughs> thank oh. you. We did, we did get this petition going, and the consensus, as Chris mentioned, was with all of the people, um, they did not balk at $50. $50 is a 100% increase over what was 2009 prices. Anything above that, they all expressed that they would probably go to Marshfield beaches and not come to Hummerock. I know that I've experienced probably a 20% decline in revenue. Is some of that the economy? Absolutely. Is a lot of it the parking situation? Absolutely. They make it clear on a daily basis. I can't tell you how many people were pleased that both Chris and I were coming here tonight to come in front of you and say, absolutely, please reconsider this. And, and I understand that your beach commission was well-intentioned, and I get that it's about revenue. But I think you forgot the businesses of Hummer Rock and the impact that it's having on us to make this decision. And if this water issue that I'm hearing about is in some way playing into that, couldn't we at least put apples to apples and have it addressed in a waterway and not hit the seasonal businesses with an 800% increase to somehow offset this disparity? Uh, hold on, Just Mr. Murray. Yeah. Um, I you know, know that said. came up, but I'll be candid with you. That doesn't factor into my decision okay. on this. So, I mean, um, that's a separate issue that the board can address in the future if it so decides, and we'll leave it at that. I will say this, because I just want to, I haven't said anything, so I just put my two cents in. Um, first of all, you know, and again, I don't mean any disrespect. I just respectfully disagree that I don't think it was a wrong decision. I don't think it's a, it's a bad decision. So I want to put that out there, because I know some, some members do. I know Tony does. I don't. Um, but as I say, I think, you know, the committee was put together by the board. The committee was basically told to go out and take a look at it. Um, in the process of doing it, the one thing that stuck to me with respect to Marshfield residents, is, which Tony speaks to, which I can hear, is what I call equity, fairness argument. You know, residents of Marshfield have had an opportunity in the past to go, and now all of a sudden they're being hit with basically an increased fee, 800 percent. Let's face it, it's, it's basically the going rate for all the surrounding towns. On the flip side, though, and, and with all due respect, because it really doesn't go to your businesses, it goes to the general issue of Marshfield residents, which is they're Marshfield residents, just like Norwell residents in Cohasset. They had a benefit to be able to utilize the town of Situate beaches at a reduced rate that no other town had. And, you know, the committee went out and took a look at it and said, look, we're going to go across the board. The fairness issue is now being put across the board mm -hmm. to say that all residents outside, non-residents, are going to pay the same rate. I think at this point, since the board's endorsed it, my position is to continue it for one year. As I said to you, I don't think it's wrong. I think we should collect the data and then go back and take a look at it next year. Um, obviously, it, the numbers so far show that the Marshfield residents have not bought stickers. And I think, ladies, you're right. You know, I think it's fair to say that if you're a Marshfield resident, you're going to go and buy a $30 ticket to go to the remaining other five beaches of the town of Marshfield. I will say, and this is what I did, I, somebody had mentioned this to me, that's why I looked up the beaches, and Mr. Hall, that's why I addressed the issue with you, which is, you know, if it's a quid pro quo issue with the town of Marshfield on beaches, I think the town of Marshfield should turn around to the town of Situate and say, you know what, if you want to be able to go to the Situate beaches at a reduced rate in the future, why don't we work a partnership out? What about the Situate residents? Go down to Wrexham. Go down to um, um, Green Harbor or Sunrise or Brant Rock. 
then I'd be in a position of saying, you know what, that, er that fairness, that equity issue that I was talking about originally would be fair. Because it's not just fair to the town of resident, uh, the residents of the town of Marshfield, it's fair to us, the town of Situate, which we as Board of Selectmen are um, elected to represent fairly. So I look at this, I looked at the report, I'm glad that the committee went back to take a look at the issue, and you know, I, I support the committee's recommendations. Now, from a business perspective, I totally empathize with the situation because I can see that your business are going to be more frequented by Marshfield residents. I think it would be a shame if residents of Marshfield decide to take it out on businesses in Home Rock um, and, and say that, you know, we're not going to go there. On the other hand, it's a simple fact. If they're not going to go there, they're not going to frequent your business. But I certainly hope they don't boycott. At this point, their tickets or their stickers are still good until July 1st. So I don't think you should be feeling any effect of that because they can still go down there. Obviously, after July 1st, I would anticipate And that's why we're here tonight, because mm -hmm. we think it's the perfect time for you to reconsider. Right. And, I, and I have to tell you right now, I looked at the uh, petition you put together, and I commend you um, for doing it. I, I, I hope, I'd love to see you do it for other things within the situ, with situ but uh, that's another issue. Um, that's my own, you know, issue on this. That's my position on it, and um, so I put my cards on the table. Um, Hold on one second, Mr. Murray. Yeah, I just want to reiterate, because there is a member of the Board of Selectmen here as well as to the audience, this has got nothing to do, from my perspective, at all with water, the, the water supply issue at all. There's no, there's been no private conversations, there's been no public discussions whatsoever, at all, in any way, shape, or form, by anything at all, any person I've ever heard of, about this being a, a water-related issue at all okay period having said that uh, I actually live in walking distance from from a beach here in situate um, so I've never bought a beach sticker because I walk and uh, mr. banger did point out that this is really a parking issue in addition to the beach issue and I'm not trying to be cutesy and neither was Mr. Banger about the fact most people drive but I also do want the word to go forth that this is not denying access it's it's restricting vehicular or limiting vehicular or feet charging for vehicular access not access to the stores not access to the beaches by other means um, and then I also do want to think there was a time about six or seven years ago I did call the Marshfield Town Hall because I do spend a fair bit of time down in Brant Rock, and I did see want to see if there was a way that I could drive and park my car down down there, and there wasn't a out of town sticker for uh, for people at the time for such at the time, and I think that would be something kind of worth investigating. Again, though, because I'm a, I agree with Mr. Vignani that the historical relationship here and so on is different, but. Maybe once we get this resolved one way or the other or next year or what, I, I'd like to see if there's a way we could work it out so that Situate residents could have uh, an off-campus or a... Reciprocity. Uh, thank you. Out of town, yeah, reciprocity. It's just as a separate, as a, as a separate issue because I don't want you all to get all caught up in that because I think there's separate things going on here. But you brought it up, so it's good. Selectman good Hall. Uh, just one more point. Uh, if there was some way that I can arrange uh, relationship of getting beach tickets at the same price, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. My only point is, sit with people having the opportunity to buy a Marshall sticker would not come. People from Brant Rock aren't going to go to Minor Beach. Oh, no, I understand that. I'm not going to go to Minor Beach. I'm not going to go to Brant Rock Beach. Hummer Rock is near where I live. That's the whole gist of it. That is because of the proximity to uh, Marshfield and to Hummer Rock. Even if we offered it, situate people would not buy those stickers because they have their own beaches closer to home. That's my our point. No, yes, sir. I understand that point, and I, I, don't, I don't pretend that the numbers would match up at all in terms of usage because I fully agree with you that more Marshfield residents are going to go to Humrock Rock than situate people are going to go to any other Marshfield beach. So that's why I, I really wanted to drive home the point that I see it as a separate issue, but nonetheless something that downstream we should maybe think about. That's all. Right, absolutely. I just predict that there's going to be an empty parking lot this summer. If you don't reconsider, there's going to be an empty parking lot. If you do reconsider, 
still won't be. It, it's as simple as that. I will buy a thirty dollar beef strip and, and go to Rexdale. Yeah. And I, I <coughs> will buy Gerard's Farm to buy turkey sandwiches instead of going to uh, Sam's Ed. I won't want to boycott it, but if I'm going to Rexia, and that's right on the way, that's where I'm going to uh, spend my uh, money on the weekends. Thank you, Selectman Thank Hall. You. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Bradley, if you have anything to add that has not been said, please do it briefly because I want to move this mo meeting on. Re regarding the beach sticker pricing for $100, you can park down there 20 times for that $100 in a private lot. Because of the hurricane of 1838 dividing our towns, and as a Marshfield resident, I'm really appalled that we don't have a reciprocal agreement with Situa. Situa people should be invited to use Marshfield beaches. We have in total 10 great, beautiful beaches and almost 50 miles of coastline. There's no reason why there should be a wall up. Absolutely should not be a reason. It should be a, an affordable ticket. How many beach stickers are sold in Marshfield every year? I mean, in Situate every year, which is my next and last point. Hold well, on. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be candid with you. I don't have that number in front of me. I, and, you know how many beach stickers, Mr. It's got to be, it's, it's, it's in the thousands. You know, it's got to be like 7,000 homes. Two, two, three thousand. 3,500. 3,500 beach stickers. Okay, and the line item, the line item is seven thousand dollars. That sticker costs no more than twenty-five cents to make. So there's a lot of fat in that line item. So my recommendation would be we can well, save six thousand. Mr. Right Bradley, I would dis respectfully disagree White. there, or Mr. White, I'm sorry, I, I would dis respectfully disagree because you don't understand the personnel and the the the, the people that, that, sell the that goes else. through the whole process. But any event, again, but, briefly, but, if you don't mind, because yeah, I want to sure. move this on. The bottom line is, please. Let the Marshfield residents use that Hum Rock Beach to keep these merchants in business. Reduce the price now, effective t today, if you can. Because if not, yeah. you've got mm -hmm. 200 customers on this uh, petition mm -hmm. right here, and you've got sales down 66%. Anytime sales are down 66%, you've got to do something, and it's usually price. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Burbine. It's, this is not about the money, Ms. Burbine. This is, is, is trying to make sure that we... Thank you very much. Any other questions? One last comment. Yes, Mr. Vignone. I think it's, I think it's our duty to, to look after the town of Situate in the long term, and I think that, uh, that this decision is going to have long-term effects. I think, it, uh, I think we're looking at this a little bit out of the bottle. I think if we lived a half a mile from a beach and had a benefit for decades and decades and it got pulled away from us, we'd be just as upset as some of the people that are coming before us and some of the people that have written us letters. And I think that this is the time to make a change. So I'd like to make a motion. Please. I make a motion that we um, change or create a new, a new beach sticker for the town of um, Marshfield to have access to Hummer Rock Beach at a price of $75. Is there a second? I'm going to second that motion for discussion purposes. Okay, seconded by Mr. Merce, uh, Mr. Murray. Discussion from the board. I just want to Mr. point Murray. out, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to point out that this is one of the more difficult votes in the last several months, certainly, that I've had. Um, given the sense of the board, I believe this motion is going to fail. I wanted to second it to help um, send a strong signal that I would like very much to, at, at the minimum, revisit this um, from the accounting point of view and the logistical point of view at the, uh, at, the end of this, at the end of this season. I just wanted to make sure that this is really, that the sense of the, that the, that the fact Don't count that... count it out yet. Okay. Let's vote. <laughs> but I just wanted to point it out there that <laughs> I really do see, and I'm not just trying to fence it here. I really see this is a very this is a, a subtly complicated issue with ramifications on both sides, and there's a lot of merit on both sides of this one. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Or not questions, but discussion. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, all in favor of Mr. Vignani's uh, motion? I'll say say uh, say aye, please. Aye. aye. All against? Say nay. Nay. Aye. It's a three to two vote. Uh, motion fails. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, moving on to our next agenda item, it's the annual appointments, agenda item number 15. So if we can start from the top. I move to re- Hold on one second. Oh, Hold sorry. On. Kim, are you ready? I'm ready? Okay, hang on. I'm almost ready. 
Okay. I move to appoint Patricia Haven Casey, the affirmative action officer. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can put it on your resume, Tricia. Uh, moving on to the Affordable Housing Trust. Is there a motion? Move to reappoint John Danahy, John Hallen, Robert Cox, Paul Lemieux. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, can I ask Kim one sure. question? Have all of these people, if they're on this list, they've contacted you and want to be reappointed? Yes. Okay. Oh, um, there's still two positions open, one of which was by a new applicant who was unable to be here tonight. His name was Jack Bolke. Um, Kim. Yes. Oh, he's not interested. Okay. Well, that's easy. Take him off. Two positions open. Anybody interested, please feel free to submit an application. Okay. Moving on to the Animal Control Board. There is one opening. Guess what? We don't have any applicants. So, anybody interested in the Animal Control Board, please submit your application to the Selectman's Office. Moving on to the Archivist. Is there a motion? Move uh, to reappoint Elizabeth Foster as the Archivist. Is there a second? Okay. Mr. Norton, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to... Uh, anybody else? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Sorry. All right. That's Sorry. unanimous. Thank you, John. Moving on to the Beautification Commission. Move to reappoint Donna Bangard and Kathleen Hillman. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Harris. All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Just to let people know, there are four openings on the Beautification uh, Commission, and we'd ask that please consider it. Also, uh, moving on to the Board of Health, there's one reappointment. Move to reappoint Francis Lynch. Second. By who? Second. Mr. Uh, Vignani, all in favor, say aye. 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 Moving on to the Bylaw Review Committee. Move to reappoint Benjamin Spruill. Is there a second. second? Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor, say aye. 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 Three, is there four? Aye. Unanimous, all unanimous. Moving on to the Board of Registrars. Move to re-elect Jane Wilder. Seconded by anybody? Second. Mr. Harris, all in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Moving on to the Cable TV Committee. Move to reappoint Richard Long and Vincent Kalicious. Second. Do those separately? Oh, all right. Move to reappoint Richard Long. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris, all say aye. 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 Um, move to reappoint Vincent Kalicious. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris, all say aye. 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 Say nay. Nay. One nay. Moving on to um, the citizen uh, representative f to the scholarship committee. Move to appoint, reappoint Judith Byrne Ariel. Second. Second. Mr. Harris, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody else? Aye. Mr. Murray, did you aye. say aye? There's aye. unanimous. Sorry. Moving on to the Commission on Disabilities. Move to reappoint Ann Breen and Robert Tarant Tarantino. Tarantino. Is there a second? Yes, second. Mr. Harris, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, for CP... Um, Unanimous. For, for CPA, Mr. Chair, yes. I'm just going to go one by one on these Please. because they're all sort of different. Yep. Um, and as a liaison, I'll just run through if I, if I may. I move to reappoint uh, George Trafton as the Housing Authority Representative to the Community Preservation Act Committee. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor say aye. Aye. Congratulations, George. Uh, second. I move to reappoint uh, William Limbacher as the planning board uh, representative of the CPA committee. Seconded by who? Second. Mr. Vignani, all in favor say aye. 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 Next. Aye. Um, the Historical Society, we do not have one yet. We will need to ask them to do so. Move on to next one, recreation. I'd like to move to reappoint Richard Lane as the recreation authority representative of the CPA committee. Second. Second. Mr. Harris, all f in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to the next one. I'd like to reappoint Mr. Frank Snow as the Conservation Commission representative of the CPA committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Great. Now we have three, um, there are three current at large mem members of this uh, Community Preservation Commission, and there are um, uh, three people are looking for a reappointment. There are two, an ap two new applications. I would like what it is. Yep. Okay. I'd like to reappoint uh, John Bullman as one of the at-large CPA committee members. Seconded by who? Second. Mr. Vignani, all in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. I'd like aye. to reappoint Mr. Paul Scott 
to the Community Preservation Act Committee at large position. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Say aye. 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 I'd like to appoint Scott Roberts as a, a new member of the Community Preservation. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Murray. All in favor? I, 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 if I may, for yep. discussion. I, I, we went over Mr. Wood. Oh. How many slots are there? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, I would move. Well, we have a motion on the floor. My, in, um, Go ahead. my intent would be to Let's make a, a motion order. on yeah. Joe Wood. Okay, point up. of order. Hold on point one second. Order. A point of order. How many slots are there available? It's four. There are four at large positions. And there, you know what? And I misspoke. So let me say this again. There are four at large. There are three current. Okay, and we have five applicants mm -hmm. seeking the position for the four. So I misspoke by saying there are only three. There are not. There are four positions. There are three current members, and there are two new people who are seeking mm -hmm. uh, uh, appointment on. So there so we go. There's a motion for Scott Roberts as the third position. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, if I may, again, I, I, I see a potential problem here. I understand what's going on. I spoke to uh, the chairman of the uh, CPC. I asked about Mr. Wood uh, for reappointment as well as the others. Uh, he said he comes to all, goes to all the meetings. Uh, he doesn't have a problem. He's a good member. I fear that if this continues the way it's going, we might pass over Mr. Wood, who uh, I don't think deserves to be passed over. Uh, might I suggest you, this, you though? Hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, if I just suggest, on the floor. Just, excuse me, gentlemen, hold on. What I'm going to say suggest is this for discussion. We, we are filling the third slot. There's still a fourth slot fourth. available, and my suggestion would be let's go back to talk about Mr. Wood. That would be I, my position. Um, I, I, I respectfully understand, uh, but, uh, and I do not want to vote against uh, my good friend Mr. Roberts, uh, but I think that the way we've done this all the way through the first two or three pages has gone down the line as they've come before us, and I would like to... Uh, it would, I would find it necessary to vote against Mr. Roberts, which I don't want to do because I think we should deal with Mr. Wood, who's a current member, before we make appointments uh, for people applying. As a point of order, I agree with Mr. Norton, or as a comment, I agree with Mr. Norton. Well, I, I guess so I have wait, a question. So, How would so, you ever so it's just a matter of who we're appointing first, correct, right, John? Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. I think well, the there's fear still is three that names with two positions yep. left. That's right. Well, I, I, I agree with Joe. So, well, you know, Mr. S Roberts has a, a, a been nominated and seconded. Would, would I will next nominate Mr. Wood? Correct. Mm -hmm. You can do it that way. You could with, uh, withdraw your motion, and then we do Mr. Wood, or we could vote up the the motion as it stands. Those are the three. Those are the two options. Doesn't Either matter. Who we, in my to opinion, me it doesn't makes matter no difference. Who we vote for first. <laughs> okay. Except I remind the board that there is a third applicant right, who I, I will nominate. Right. Okay. All right, so look, right. why don't we do this, gentlemen? Let's mm -hmm. let's vote on the motion as it stands, and then we'll address the next issue. Is that okay? Fine with that. Sure. I, I will do that. If that's the chair desire, I... I that, uh, that, it, that's what I would say it, right it now. It puts me in a position of voting against uh, someone who I might want to appoint, okay. because I want Mr. Okay. Right. That was, but that's fine. I can would, deal with that. Would you consider with uh, withdrawing your motion? Well, I understand. Let's say, hypothetically, that... Mr. Wood wasn't going to be reelected, and I don't. I don't even know Mr. Wood. So I don't either. Yeah. I don't, so, I don't, I don't know but that. if that was the case, don't you just go by whoever you want to be on the committee? You could do that. Yeah. Yep. 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 I mean, if as opposed to if, if you have a reason, I have no agenda. I just, I you said <clears throat> three. I got Miss. Yep. And I vote. I and, and you have every right to do that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you have it's, it's every right to to uh, not appoint Mr. Wood if if you feel that way. Right. And I, but there's there's. The other wrinkle here, just to make clear to everybody in the audience, is reappointments are not automatic, but it's been tradition that if the person has been doing very well and all that sort of stuff, and there's no obvious reason why not. So that's why I, my mistake, Tony, as well, I know John said. Well, I don't think it's there, a mistake. My they, mistake for just going through the reappointments first, but that was my intent was to nominate after Paul Scott, which we just unanimously said yes to. My next nomination was, in fact, going to be Joe Wood. But I don't think that's procedure. We can nominate whoever we want. Absolutely in right. Order we want. Absolutely. So, right. absolutely right. We don't have to actually, again, hypothetically, vote Mr. Wood down to get Miss Fenton on. If if the thought was to go in a certain way, I don't. 
I don't have well, any. Well, we would have to vote in order to, if, if, if your motion prevails. Yeah. Uh, Someone would make a motion for Mr. Wood next. Exactly. I, I, and and uh, I, would, I, would, I, I would suggest this. I would suggest um, voting, voting the motion as it stands and then um, addressing the issue next. Um, I think if, if we do that, I, I would, you know, aside from the procedural, which I totally respect what you're saying, because truth be told, we should have probably gone through Mr. Wood first. I totally agree. But I would probably, I would say, let's vote this, mm -hmm. then we'll address, address that issue immediately, separate and apart from the procedure. Not, if I may just, be, but I don't want to prolong this at all. Uh, but I want to be fair to everybody because I think we get three good candidates for two positions. That's what it comes down to. I, my thought would be, and uh, would be that I know Mr. Roberts is a member of the Historical Society. No, he's not. That takes care of my good idea. <laughs> uh, they come and they go, I, don't I they? Would, <laughs> it's a vacancy. Do I send in my annual dues now? Yeah. I, well, I'm just thinking there was an opening. Of, uh, a representative from the Historical Society to the conservation, to the CPC. Don't they have to? Uh, my thought would be, uh, I would love to see Scott appointed to that. Then we could appoint Ms. Fenton and Ms. Wood to the open position. That's just my thought, but that would depend upon the Historic Society agreeing with my Correct. thinking. I think, I think Mrs. Fenton would be a more effective member of the CPC than Don't sell yourself short, Mr. Roberts. You've done a lot of good things for the town. So um, all right, so let's let's um, let's mo vote the motion. It's it's presently first. Who was uh, the motion for? <laughs> it was for Mr. Roberts by okay. uh, Mr. Vignani, seconded by you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, moving on. Next one, Mr. Harris. Do you have one? I'd like to move Joseph Wood. Second. So, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor, say aye. Oh, aye. If I may, if I may. Yes, here's, Mr. The, here's the yeah. problem. I. I I would want, had wanted to put Mrs. Fenton in nomination. I also want to vote, as you can plainly see, for Mr. Wood. By me voting for Mr. Wood now eliminates Mrs. Fenton. And that's what I wanted to do it the other way, uh, to nominate Mr. Wood first. And that's well, what, one I, of the what I perceive happening is happening, and that's, so be it. But you it know what? It, so it be just, it. Okay. You're already been appointed. You'd have to write a letter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he hasn't been sworn in. He hasn't been sworn in. <laughs> well, here's the predicament that, you know, appointments always pose for people, and that is that, you know, when you have somebody who's been on a committee or a board and they're asking and seeking reappointment and they've been to the meetings and they've been doing things, it's pretty hard, we're pretty hard pressed to say no, unless, you know, they've been underperforming or there have been problems. That's not been the case with Mr. Wood. Having said that, when you have one slot open, you end up with one, two, or three other applicants who are well qualified for it. This okay. board is always faced and confronted with having to select one person, and it puts us in the unenviable position of having to select somebody. Um, unfortunately, there can only be one posi position, one person. Um, and it's no reflection on the ones who don't get the position. We just ask them to reapply to either another commission or come back again next year. And, and Ms. Fenton has done a wonderful job um, in the advisory. She's done a wonderful job with Sustainable Situate. She's been involved with trails. And, and you know, frankly, there will be another position open on this committee for preservation, I presume, next year. There are going to be other slots. So, again, it's no slight to anybody. It's just, you know, the board has to be in the position of selecting. And, so, I, again, that's, that's my take uh, on it. I just w want to go on, on record that I obviously want to vote for Mr. Wood. Uh, I brought his name up. Uh, I also want to put Ms. Fenton's name in nomination, but by, nominating, but by voting for Mr. Wood, that won't be possible. I just want to state it as I just stated it and let the record show that. Thank you. Okay. I think we had a nomination, right? We did. We so did. First, second, and all in favor, say aye. 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 Very good. Unanimous. Moving on to the next. Um, Conservation Commission. Move to reappoint Penny Scott Pipes. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Anthony Jones. Second. Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Constable. Move to appoint Todd Reardon. Second. Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
With aye. Point. Aye. With point Richard Unanimous. Rimponi. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint yes. Brendan Lynch. Second. Point the Council on Aging now. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Gerald Fermonti. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now, um, let's see. There is a um, one one year position available, and this was the applicant who came before us, Ms. Dale Balog. Um, is there a motion? Move to appoint Dale Balog to the Council on Aging. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Now, moving on to the um, Fair Housing Officer. Uh, mm, uh, I am going to um, um, oh, let's, uh, postpone you. that, and so we're moving on to the Fair Housing Officer. Thank you. Move to appoint Patricia Francesi for Fair Housing Officer. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Let's get it straight. It's is it. You guys are messing me up because I'm going to say Vincesi, and then I'm like, is it Vincesi? Because I keep saying Vincesi, and unfortunately, Vincesi. it's not an Irish name. It's Vincesi. There we go. There we go. Tony Vignani. So, Vincesi. Very good. Okay. We've got that only took a year to get this. <laughs> To get that straight. Very glad. Well, that. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's there all right, Joe. I was Italians. confused too. I'm glad you I keep going. I'm Doesn't like, I'm going to get it right because I'm afraid to say your last name because I don't want to <laughs> share it. It's going to be on here again. I'll get it right. Stop the point if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you are. All right. We got a nomination. Did I hear a second? I apologize. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. All right. Next. Fence viewer. You can get this one. Appoint uh, Jason Harris as fence viewer. Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Harris. No relation. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Move to reappoint Neil Duggan as field driver. Second. Mr. Norton, second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Now we're on to the Historic Commission. Move to reappoint Douglas Smith. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Arthur Beale. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint uh, Harvey Gates. And second. Mr. Harris. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, which so moved. Move. So moved. Okay. And there's one. Is it open? Gonna, yeah, that means there's one available position. Yes. Yeah. Okay, moving on next to the licensing <coughs> agent. Move to appoint Lieutenant Detective Michael Stewart. Second. Mr. Vignani, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Vignani, would you like this Not one for the local auction permit agent? Nope. Don't move, see anyone I want to appoint. Move to appoint Patricia A. Vincasey. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 MBTA representative. Move to reappoint Al Bangert. Is there a second? second? Mr. Norton, second. Point. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move that to unanimous? Aye. Yes. yes, unanimous. Next. Move to reappoint Ann Burbine to the uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council and South Shore Coalition. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Nay. Next, uh, North River Commission. Move to reappoint Joseph P. Norton, Jr. Seconded by who? Second. Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Joseph P. Norton, Sr. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to appoint Joyce, Joseph P. Norton for Plymouth County Advisory Board. Second. Mr. Harris, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move to reappoint Anthony D'Onofrio on the, the Public Buildings building building. Commission. I'm sorry. Thank you. Second and by who? Joe. Second. Aye. Mr. Second. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 And secondly, Sean Mulkern, also with Public Buildings second. Commission. Mr. Norton. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recreation Commission. Move to uh, reappoint Chris Roberts for the Recreation Commission. Second. Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next to the Renewable Energy Committee. Uh, move to appoint Bruce Meacham to the Renewable Energy Committee. As a new S applicant? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Second. Next one. Um, even though she didn't appear tonight, um, she sent an email, and I had some email discussion back and forth with her, and, and I believe this woman is very well qualified, so I'd like to nominate Carrie Cullen Hitt to the Renewable Energy Committee. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, moving on to the Situate Cultural Council. 
We appoint Doreen Lang. Seconded. Second. Mr. Norton, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next. We appoint Patrice May. Second. Mr. Norton, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Sec uh, next one. And finally, Lisa Grizz or Grizzy. Second. Seconded by Mr. Second. Uh, Norton, all in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to the Street Acceptance Committee. Move to reappoint John Danini, William Limbacher, and Kevin Cafferty. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's one vacancy there. Is there aye over here? Aye. Sir. Aye. 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 I'll vote aye except on mine, which I am abstaining on. So unanimous for all, four for me, and um, unanimous for uh, Mr. Limbacher and Mr. Cafferty. Next, moving on to the Surveyor of Lumber, I move Measure to, of Wood and Bark. I move to reappoint Al Banger as the Surveyor of Lumber, Measure of Wood and Bark. Did we get a resume on that? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? I guess so. Second. Mr. Harris, all really in favor, say aye. 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 Can I have a point of order on the next one? I ask that you postpone this. If I could just make the motion for the board in keeping with the motion that the board made for a reappointment of the town treasurer early this year, yep. that the town accountant's reappointment be made and contingent upon successful completion of her FY11 goals and objectives. So, so moved. So moved. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Moving on to the Traffic Rules Regulations Committee. Um, sorry, there was another one on the list. Yes. Did I mean, oh, there we go. And the assistant town. We'll do that in the next meeting. Okay. Oh, Thank uh, you. Are we, we're doing that one right later, right? I'm um, sorry, we're sorry. postponing yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Moving on to the Traffic Rules and Regulations Committee. Chairman Move, Alfred Elliott, Kevin Cafferty, Mac Thompson, Dorothy Cook, and Karen McDonald. Second, sir. Thank you. Seconded by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Moving on to Waterways. Um, I'd like to move to reappoint Peter Toppin to the Waterways Commission. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to appoint Mary McLaughlin to the Waterways Commission. Second. By Mr. Harris, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous? Aye. Move to appoint David Glancy to the Waterways Commission. Second. Second by Mr. Harris, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. If I could just point out, as Mr. Danny, he said earlier, this is a situation where we had one more or two more candidates than we had excellent candidates for slots available. And Mr. White, you're sitting here in the audience. I know, I hope you can continue to be an active associate member. Knowing you the way I do, I don't think you won't be inactive. <laughs> and you will certainly speak your mind. And uh, please continue to come to the meetings. You're a very valued associate member. And we had a number Should of good applicants. Yes, great. Thank you. Could, could I uh, like to nominate uh, Mr. Brad White is an associate member. Second. Second. By Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move Howie Kruisberg as an associate member. Second. 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 Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And Donald Houlihan uh, as an associate member. Second. Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to the Water Resource Committee. Move to uh, reappoint Robert Murray. Second. Second. Mr. Murray, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to reappoint Daniel Martin. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Harris, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, there is one opening on this committee still, so if anybody's interested in the Water Resource Committee, please submit an application to the Selectman's Office. Moving on to the Zoning Board of Appeals, the final appointment tonight. Move to reappoint Peter Morin and Edward Tibbetts. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Murray, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. That completes the appointments, uh, folks. Thank you very much. Moving on to agenda item number 16, which happens to be acceptance of gifts um, from the Recreation Department and memorials. Move uh, the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the kind gift of $400 from Situate Health Service on behalf of the Recreational Commission and the Town of Situate. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And move the board of selectmen to accept the kind gift of two granite memorial benches. One bench will replace at Widow's Walk Golf Course, and the other at the sit, uh, Situate Marine Park. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to agenda item number 17, which is the town administrator's report. Ms. Vincasey. Uh, quickly, gentlemen, uh, just to review a couple of highlights since your last meeting, we had an informational session for all the working committees. On the changes to the open meeting law, 
There were about 20 folks that attended, and Bernice Brown and I um, tried to answer questions and provide a variety of information and materials um, to folks of those committees as we prepare for those changes. We believe they'll be delayed to November 1st. Um, we got a new directive today from the Attorney General's Office about uh, changes in the posting requirements. So um, we'll be dealing with the transition into this for the next few months. Um, the town had two, every municipality in the Commonwealth had two unexpected uh, elections as a result of the death of Senator Kennedy. We received our reimbursement from the Commonwealth. The town accountant informs me that the board must take a vote as to how those <coughs> funds will be distributed and allocated. And um, <coughs> we satisfy first any deficit that the town clerk's budget uh, experienced as a result of that. And the remaining balance will close to full cash. We did do an additional appropriation at the November town meeting. Um, so she will have some surplus, but she does have some shortfall now because of elections. In that case, is there a motion? Will the Board of Selectmen vote to apply the special election proceeds to reduce any deficit in the town clerk's budget for expenditures related to the special elections on December 8th, 2009 and January 19th, 2010? Second. Second. Mr. Vignani, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, Pier 44, um, pleased to inform you all that we closed on June 16th with a lot of people doing a lot of work to pull that together before, during, and since. I particularly uh, want to take this opportunity to thank our building commissioner, Neil Duggan, Al Bangert, our DPW superintendent, and Deputy Chief John Murphy for the tremendous help they've provided to me as we uh, secure the building, realarm it, fire sprinkle it, HVAC operations, um, and, and the like that we will be doing. The building is not uh, able to be entered to uh, for a bit. We have substantial cleaning to do and to make it safe for anybody to go in. Um, we'll be spending um, some short money to get some things in order, um, but the DPW will have uh, a big job in cleaning out a lot of debris and I will be identifying surplus equipment that we will first make available to town departments and then auction the remaining. And at some point in our next meeting, we'll have a charge for a uh, feasibility yes. committee to go forward. Okay. Yes, actually that's Good. why I'm glad you delayed your meeting so I can work on that when okay. I return. Just a comment Smart. on that. Yeah. Um, you know, we're gonna be, as it says here, and we've all discussed, we're gonna have a ad hoc committee of citizens to help advise and brainstorm and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we've been getting some people who volunteered their names already, but we've also said, well, we're going to be putting out a call for, for interest. Is there a reason why we can't just put the call out now so this can happen concurrently? What I don't want to have happen is we get the charge in two weeks, three weeks, or a month, or whatever it may be, which is fine. And then we say, okay, now we're going to be starting accepting applicants. Everybody give us an application in two or three weeks. If we could do this kind of concurrently, Obviously, we're not going to impanel anybody, any of the applicants, until the charge of the committee is put out. But if we could just say, okay, anybody's interested, send in us a letter by July 9th, which is clearly weeks ahead of us needing to appoint anybody, but that way we could sort of get people in. I just don't want to, I don't want to have things have to go in series if they could go in parallel. So. Just a Norton. comment, I'd like to ask Kim, how many uh, letters of interest have we gotten so far, approximately? already and I would anticipate you want um, representatives from other boards and committees to a certain extent and also residents of the community that have a particular expertise in architecture or yeah. feasibility or something I mean I'm still working through that process. yeah no I, I agree and so, so that we can put you know we want to make sure we capture those elements in the community as well. yeah so we're gonna want you know we're only gonna appoint X number which we don't even know yet because we don't know what that number is but it's just the more applicants, the merrier. And we have been telling people that we would put out a, a formal request, just like we do with all the other panels. So no, Do we know who we're looking for, like Trisha just said? But we're not going to appoint anybody yet. I think you just did by bringing it up for discussion. <laughs> for the what do you mean? Thousands of people that are watching. You know, Millions. Oh. Well, I'll send in the, I think the, 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 you know the thought I mean? is, is that, Trisha, you're going to come back with the charge. and and. For everybody who understands, I mean, we're going to be putting a committee together to take a look at this. So I think people understand that, and I know that people have talked about it. Um, I would think that um, whether we tell them now or later, it, this is going to be 
a very well thought out you know, project that we're going to look at. And um, whether it's parallel or not, I, I think okay. waiting two weeks, three weeks tops to get it and then have them come back. Because I, frankly, I think we're going to interview everybody and go through it so that when you send that committee off, they'll, they'll going to be well qualified. Yeah, no, I just want, okay. Then I, I, we'll I, wait a couple weeks and then we'll I issue a, a request right. then. No problem with me. All right, Tricia. Um, the final item is um, I provided the board with an employment um, uh, agreement uh, for the board, the town of Situate, and the acting town administrator. It's been recommended by the Municipal Management Association so that um, required by charter to name an acting town administrator when I'll be out of town for any period of time. And um, this allows the person serving in that to be held harmless for any decisions that may be made as a result of serving in my position. So um, with that, I would recommend that the board appoint Chief of Police Brian Stewart to serve as Acting Town Administrator from June 23rd to July 6th and uh, approve and execute the attached document and giving him any power and authority to execute my duties on my behalf. Do you need a motion? So moved. Actually, this is going to run concurrent with my employment contract, so you don't have to keep doing it. This is one time. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. That's it. Okay. Uh, moving on to item number, agenda item 18, other business. None from me, Mr. Chair. Uh -huh. Mr. Murray, anybody else? Mr. Vignani? Nothing. No. Nope. Just one quick one, if I could. Real Absolutely. quick. Absolutely. Kim forwarded all a uh, request that I had by a resident, and I think the same resident asked Joe about it when he was voting on Saturday. The elephants are dry. That's right. So I, I think was Mike Green going to ask Al any any reason why they it might have stopped the water? Water conservation. No, Thank not you. really. <laughs> no, there's an underground leak. Oh. The, uh, there's a leak somewhere probably underneath the basin itself between oh. the uh, we've already burned out a pump because it ran dry. Ooh. Okay. All right. Elef Thank elephants you. need water. We know yeah. that. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, good. The only thing I uh, anything else, Mr. Harris? No. Nope, I was just going to say um, on the uh, community gardens and the um, uh, food pantry, the garden that's out here on First Parish. If you haven't seen it, it's excellent. They've done a great job, and so I commend everybody involved in that with the Conservation Commission and the. Department of Public Works for getting water out there or the water department. So, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, moving on to correspondence. Seeing that there are, there is none, I move on to the final item, which is adjournment. That's, uh, move to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Thank you, folks. Good night. We'll see you um, July 13th, is it, Kim? July 13th. July 13th. Very good. Thank you. Good night.